I have never learned enough from reading in a book to pale in comparison what I've learned in from life. conversation and experience. Absolutely. What's happening, man? This is Expeditiously. I'm your host, Tip T.I. Harris. Uh, what we do here is we have relevant discussions to the community, the culture, and the generation with people who are relevant to the discussion. I am graced today by two women for today's episode. Uh, and who am I to complain? I must admit. My first guest is not only a pioneer in the industry, but she helped open the door for future female hip hop artists by daring to do what had never been done while doing something she loved. She was the first rap artist ever to perform at New York's historic Carnegie Hall, the first female rapper to ever receive a gold single, the first female solo rapper ever nominated for a Grammy, and in 2006 became the first solo female rapper to be honored and inducted on VH1's Hip Hop Honors. Please welcome the great, the legendary, MC Light. Thank you. What's wow. going on? Wow. And alongside her uh, is a young lady who was named one of the 20 hottest influencers in America by Urban Influence magazine. Uh, she's an author, uh, entertainment executive, and celebrity financial coach with more than two decades of leading roles in the banking and real estate sales industries. She's featured regularly on the Steve Harvey Show and Access Hollywood Live, mm -hmm. the Hallmarks Channel Home and Family Show, BET Networks, and more. Please welcome to Expeditiously, Dr. Lynn Richards. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. All right now, so y'all bossing it up. <laughs> y'all bossing it up now. Y'all didn't come in here with no shabby introductions. Y'all got accolades now. Right, right. So, now, like, yeah. I, I mean, humbly, I must start with giving you the all of the well-deserved uh, salutations for, you know, being a trailblazer and a visionary uh, for hip-hop. Not just as a female, because you was, just, you was just dope. You know what I'm saying? And I think that uh, a lot of your your acumen led to challenging other people. Like, you know, I know I know there are guys in your era like, man, you ain't gonna let a girl like rap you, are you? <laughs> and I'm sure that heightened their level of, of expertise uh, to make hip-hop, help make hip-hop what we know it to be today. How does it feel going from where you were when you first came out to seeing right now how welcomed and appreciated it is for female hip-hop artists in the industry? Oh, man, it feels, it feels uh, somewhat unreal, actually, mm. just to see where it's gone to. You know, we look back when I came in in, you know, late 80s and then in the 90s. You know, I would look back at somebody like Sha Rock from the Funky 4 Plus One More and okay. say, you know, this was the first female MC that I heard on the mic, though she doesn't get to, in my opinion, participate in the finances, right? Mm -hmm. Because she came so early at that Got stage. You. And now where, you know, all of my school sits there, yes, everybody's making money, but not the way that the female MCs that are coming out today right. are making their money. You right. know, they make their money on stage, whereas we make our money in various other places. Right. But it's just, um, it's phenomenal to see the groundwork that was laid and the flowers that keep growing mm. and keep growing. And I love that everyone's into variety. Yeah. You know, that's where we finally had to get to because, you know, we were stuck in a little space for a minute. But yeah. now we've got this variety where you have everyone from somebody like Cash Doll to Tierra Whack. Right. To, you know, it's it runs the gamut, and I love it. It's, it's refreshing to be able to see all of it. Man, I mean, with thanks to the work that you were that you were uh, putting in early on in your career, did you ever see back then the potential for for uh, mainstream female hip hop artists to kind of flourish and and be like not just accepted but more celebrated? More celebrated. Uh, I think I think 
I was on to that already because okay. we had salt and pepper, you know, right, and they right. had push it, and then they came back with shake your thing, and you know they had many a uh, many of songs that were top, you know, top ten hits. Sure, and and then you know. God's blessing, I was able to do the same thing with Keep On Keeping On, a sure. Cold Rocker Party, and, um, you know, other Poor Georgie. and Poor Georgie stuff. was one of my favorites. Thank you. Poor Georgie was one of my favorites. Thank that was you a dope, very much. That was a dope way, to, dope way to represent that sample. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, that sample was a part of my life with my uncle. Mm. He played D-Train and Earth, Wind & Fire and, you know... Uh, Tina Marie and Rick James and all of that, and he allowed me to play his records. And I remember that with Toto, and I'll tell you something interesting about that record is we made it, Mm -hmm. and then we had to clear the sample after it was already released. Mm. You know what that means. Yeah, that means you got got, got raked over the coals. Oh, yeah, yeah. They came in, and they took it. They took the all of the publishing because mm. it was two samples in there, one Michael Jackson, one Diana Ross. So Joe Beck took mm. f- uh, 50%, mm-hmm. 25, 25. And then Toto said, oh, well, we want 50. So mm. they took the whole 100. So I'm glad that people enjoy that song. For me, it was <laughs> worth it. <laughs> It was worth thank it. Thank you for bringing up the fact that I didn't make any money on that song. Uh, thank you so much for pointing that out, Tip. Yeah. Way to welcome MC no, Light no, expeditiously. But, but it was worth it. You know, it was worth it because it means so much to people, that song right. specifically. So I'm glad that it. Uh, I sacrificed that in order to touch the people. Absolutely. And we appreciate that. Thank you. Um, what made you want to rap? Like, what was the first moment that you said, this is what I want to do? Mm. Um, well, it was something I definitely admired when I heard uh, Sha Rock, but it was mm. when I heard Salt and Pepper that I okay. was like, okay. Yeah. I, and that was a song called Showstoppers, okay. where they were dissing Dougie Fresh and Slick Rick. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, oh my God, this yeah. is something. Okay, now I want to get into this. Right. And that's when I started writing in school. I mean, I was, I don't know, I, I was young. Right. And um and then I became a part of a group. This guy that wrote rhymes for me, he put me with this other girl and we were we were sparkle and dazzle. <laughs> and the group was called Pure Elegance. Pure Elegance? Yes. Pure <laughs> Elegance. Okay. And yeah, what you got? I'm not, so Salt and Pepper came out before you? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Oh wow. Yeah. So, so you were like eleven or twelve, right? Yeah. When you first yeah, yeah, and they had yeah. hot, cool, and vicious. Mm-hmm. Mm. So that that was definitely before. Me. Okay. So the first the first uh female artist that I can recall uh hearing is is Salt and Pepper, uh Roxanne, Shante. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. <clears throat> um Roxanne uh, came before Salt and Pepper too. Yep. Yeah, well I mean like I was a kid. I mm-hmm. was like and I used to travel to New York every summer and then I just would kinda like absorb all of what was playing on the radio mm-hmm. and the videos from the box and so you know, I had a different experience at the time. I was kinda like spending time up there and, mm-hmm. and, and just soaking it up. Mm-hmm. Uh and Queen Latifah. Mm-hmm. Um uh 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 Three five seven, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, uh, and you guys, you know, like was there a tight community amongst you guys, or was absolutely there a fierce rivalry? No, not not whatsoever. And, well, I mean, of course, you had Roxanne Shante and the real Roxanne. Mm. They had their little, you know, beef. But in the early days. Um, I remember being at the New Music Seminar with La and Moni Love and Michi oh, Me out of Canada right. and Sweet Tea and Jazzy Joyce and Harmony and Miss Melody. And, right. Like, it was, uh, we all got along. We, it was, we were too, um, we were too much of a minority mm-hmm. to not gravitate towards one another. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. And so, and we all had something in common. You mm. know, the, even the way that I met Latifa, I was on the line at the New Music Seminar waiting to get my badge. And I felt somebody tap me on my shoulder and I turned around and she said, are you MC Light? And I was like, yeah. She was like, oh, my God, I love I cram to understand you. Mm. She said, I'm Queen Latifa," And I was like, Queen Latifa." 
she was like the princess of the posse. I was like, oh, the princess of the posse because I had already hung out a lot with uh, Postanus and True Goy. Postanus, I don't, I'm not. That's familiar. De La Soul. Okay. Those are the members of De La Soul. Okay, gotcha. And so I used to hang I out call with them. them. Plug one and plug two. Right. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> yeah, Postanus and True Goy. And what would happen is it was. A uh, tribe called Quest before they even dropped a record, mm -hmm. and uh, wow. the Jungle Brothers, mm. and we will all hang out at this place called Leaders the Payday. Of the new school. They weren't formed yet. They weren't formed yet. Yeah, they weren't so, formed yet. Leaders of the new school was still. Yeah, in they the didn't. New school, right? <laughs> 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 yes, because they all the leaders of the new school and tribe kind of came out at the same time. Mm. So, so in any case, we would go to these parties and we would hang out, and so we were the only women. So we kind of gravitated like we're women that and we love hip hop. Not only do we love it, but we want to do it. We right. want to be a participatory in it. So I think now one thing that I can say, because uh, we brought up. Uh, uh, salt and pepper, but it, salt and pepper kind of seemed like they were approaching it from more of a feminine perspective. Mm -hmm. You came out and was like, "Nah, I'm getting down. I'm getting down with the guys. Right. I'm getting down with y'all, uh, and I'm just as good as y'all." Mm -hmm. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That was a different level of confidence. Like, where do you think that came from? Well, there were two things actually happening. First of all, I was from Brooklyn, which Brooklyn is very <laughs> different from Queens. Let, let right me say now. that. I try to explain that to people when they know nothing about the boroughs. And right. um, I think somebody, I, I want to say Shine, at one point put it in a rhyme. It's like, uh, Queens, you say, come on, let's go. They go, oh, my nails, oh, my this, oh, my, oh, my. Brooklyn, you you say to your girl, it's time to go, and she out the door. It don't matter what she looks like. Right. It's time to leave. So I was from Brooklyn, and... You know, the asymmetrical hairstyle, the big jeans, the big gold earrings. It wasn't anything I made up. I got it from Brooklyn. I was a product of what was happening around me, and it was all Caribbean culture. Uh. So you could see, like, a block in the Caribbean, in Jamaica, and you would go, oh, that's how MC Light dresses. Right. Like, she dressed like a Jamaican. <laughs> and so, right, or, a, you know, a Bahamian, Trinidadian, whatever. That was one thing that was going on. And the second thing was I didn't want people to look at me. I wanted to be heard. Right. I wanted to be on stage, and I wanted you to be just into the vocals and not necessarily paying attention to what I looked like. And then many years later, when I was like, okay, I'm ready for them to know what I look like, <laughs> Sylvia Rome was like, uh-uh. You, I, I did a photo shoot the way I wanted to do it, mm -hmm. and she saw it, and she was like, mm-mm, you need to stay young for as long as you can. Go put them jeans on and go take that picture out in the street. And that's how we got the album cover to uh, act like you know. Mm. But, yeah, so that, that's I really mean, where it stemmed from. Like, did you ever like? Did you ever get in ciphers and battle? You know what I mean. With... Um, I had one big battle at the world. Okay. And that was with Antoinette. Mm. And you know, quite honestly, it wasn't fair for her. <laughs> no, it, it wasn't because I had already had music out. Right. So I had a chance to build a bit of a fan base with a couple of songs prior to she and I having that beat. But how did you guys get paired for this opposition? Uh, I don't, you know, being naive, I would say it was purely by accident. Everybody mm. was there at the world that night, and it just so happens that we walked in there. But why would why would they say... Antoinette against MC oh, Light. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. So prior to that, mm -hmm. <laughs> Milk and Giz had talked with Herbie Lovebug, okay. who, is, uh, who was Antoinette's producer at the time. Milk and Giz, Audio 2. Audio 2. Yeah. Right. Top billing. Top billing. 1989. Yeah, yeah. Right. So they talked with Herbie Lovebug and said, we want you to do an answer to this record mm. called Stop Illin'. Because we knew for a fact that back in the days, if you did a diss and somebody did an answer, it would give longevity to both of the songs. Oh, you guys knew that even back then? We knew that back oh, then. Oh, man, I thought that was some new <laughs> shit. <laughs> 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 yeah, 
Yeah, uh-uh. no, we we knew that back then. And so it was Herbie's love bu- Herbie Lovebug's job to do the stop illing, which he said he would do. Mm-hmm. And it just was taking a really long time. And so the guys kind of forgot about it. And we were in Boston. And we were riding home to New York City. And we put on WBLS. And we heard this female rapping. And in the song, she says something about your bodyguards. Mm. And that's a known line in Top Billing. My bodyguard, your bodyguard too. You know, like. Mm-hmm. And so they felt instantly offended and mm. was like, oh, who the hell is this? She's dissing us, you know. Mm. You mean that I got a great big body guard? Right. Step up if right. you want to get, get hurt. hurt. Yeah, Milk, okay. he's going to pull the skirt. So so, she, so she just took the bodyguard line, or did she persist with the rest She said, it? no, she said something about your bodyguard. Gotcha. Right. And so, so they, they, auto, they automatically felt this is aimed and directed at us. Right. This is a missile. Right. <laughs> and she's a woman, and they're right. men. And so what do they do? They look at me like, you got to diss her. I look this you up. Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> Literally, we went to the studio that night on Murray Street, a studio called INS, which is infamous for a lot of hip-hop records back in the days. And we were in there all night mm. recording a diss to her. So, of course, now that disc comes out. And she has to respond. She has to. She Now she has to take the energy that she was putting towards her own situation. Mm. Now she has to defend herself mm-hmm. against some somebody that's dissing her, and she don't even understand why. Mm. Um, so that's how that battle began. And so not too long after, we wound up at the world. Mm-hmm. And so she did that song, which turns out we're friends now. We talked. She said she never was dissing them. Well, that's that's very, very good news. But mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you something. I wound up, like, maybe 10 years later dating a guy that wrote the rhymes oh. that dissed me. What? Isn't that something? But the reason why I say that's important is because sometimes when somebody writes something for you, Mm -hmm. they're using you as a via to diss whoever they want, but you are unaware. Mm. Uh, Yeah, so the writer may have had, you know, some kind of... He did. He told me. I (laughs) dated him. So he wow. was very what clear. Think, made him, what do you think? What do you think? Just, you know, because they was the hot cats at the time. And, yeah. yeah. Okay. And they were supposed to get dissed, but it was supposed to be Stop Illin. Uh, Remember, it was supposed yeah. to, they talked to Herbie. They said, come with a diss. Call it Stop Illin. Gotcha. It'll give more life to Top Billin. Mm. But he didn't do it that way. He did it another way. He told someone else to do it. He had Antoinette do it. He sent, he sent a shooter. Mm. <laughs> now speaking of what you you mentioned you mentioned uh, about when you write well have people write for you mm-hmm. at that present moment in your career were you writing your own music I was so, at that time in my career um, really what I had was a book that I had started writing in in 1982 mm. it had rhymes and poetry and when I went to audition for first party music it was in a studio and I opened up the book Mm-hmm. And I just started saying stuff. And one producer said, oh, I got that one. one like Paper Thin. Paper okay. Thin was a poem. Oh. I said it, and King of Chills said, I got that one. Okay, cool. Like, if you notice, it doesn't even have a hook. Yeah. And it's one short verse and one long verse. Right. And then with um, I Cram to Understand You, I did it the first night I went to the studio. Mm. And... Uh, Milk had a Tascam, he had a four track, and he had this beat machine, and he made the beat right there while I did I Cram to Understand. So everything from that album came out of that book. Mm. Yeah. Well, wow. I would be remiss if I did not say that uh, Dr. Lynn mm-hmm. and MC Light are not only friends and sisters, but you are both in business together. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you were just appointed uh, president of MC Light's Hip Hop Sisters Foundation. Yes. Uh, and it seemed like it morphed from there. Mm-hmm. Tell us about how you and Light started working together. 
Mm -hmm. um, I was born and raised in Chicago. My grandmother was 75 years old, cleaning homes for wealthy people, putting me through college. Mm -hmm. She taught me to go to school, get a good education, get a good job, go to church on Sunday, wear clean underwear in case you get hit by a bus. Mm -hmm. You know, all of those things. Um, I went off to college, and I didn't know a lot about money. The only thing I knew about money was if I needed some, my grandmother would tell me to look in the closet on top of the shelf, behind the box, inside my pocketbook, inside the zipper, wrapped up in a piece of paper towel, it's $20. <laughs> you know, so that's kind of how I grew hey, up. Hey, man, that's good big mama. That's big that's mama big advice. Mama. And um, so I get off to college. I had a very poor relationship with money. I got a bunch of credit cards, a lot of mistakes. I made that a lot of people uh, make. Fast forward, I get out into the real world. Uh, now I'm married, three children, white picket fence, all of that stuff. And no matter how much money I made, whether it was fifty thousand a month, eighty thousand a month, ninety thousand a month, mm. I was always broke. Mm. Always broke. I call it living check to Monday. Mm. You see, check to check is a blessing. That means you get paid on Friday by the next payday you broke. But check to Monday means you get paid on Friday. You kick it on the weekend. You pay on your pass through bills, and by Monday you're broke. Damn. And I was, yeah, I was devastated because I thought that the answer to not having enough money was to get more money. And so I went on to become a radio show host in Chicago, helped a lady with four bankruptcies and two foreclosures overcome our credit issues. I'm helping all these people get their money straight, and mine was jacked up. So I hit rock bottom. Yep. Mine was okay. jacked up. Okay. Hit rock bottom and uh, wound up working for J.P. Morgan Chase. Um, blew up the division, wound up doing like $36 million on an initiative that had only done $3 million. Now I'm the golden girl. I'm still broke, still trying to figure <laughs> out how am I going to get out of this. So one day I decided, literally in a meeting, where I was supposed to go over my three- to five-year business plan mm -hmm. and tell all the division how I was going to do it, I said, I'm going to spend my time helping people remove money as a barrier to God. Mm. I said that in this big corporate meeting with a lot of white people. They were like, what did she just say? I was like, what did you just say? Mm. <laughs> Left the company that day, literally opened up a magazine. I saw Russell Simmons, Jay-Z, uh, Susie Orman. I saw them talking about get your money right, and I said, that's supposed to be me. Mm. So I wound up uh, getting home that night to Chicago, sending, finding a, a phone number and an email for Russell Simmons' office, wound up sending an email, all of that stuff. I gave them to the next day to call me back. They didn't. So I <laughs> harassed them. And uh, by the time I finally got a meeting with Russell and Dr. Chavis and Valicia Butterfield, I went into the office and I told them that I thought that Get Your Money Right was good, but their sponsors were Anheuser and at Anheuser Busch and Chrysler, and I felt like black people didn't need more cars to drive, nor that they need more beer to drink while they're driving them. <laughs> I started talking about ways to build wealth mm -hmm. because in our community, rich people stay rich because they act poor, poor people stay poor because they act rich. We're backwards, so I just wanted to be a help, and they asked me to run a national program mm. that day. Um, that day. That day. Mm. I, mm -hmm. I just went there to be on stage. You didn't and no to, time, did you? Let me tell you. And, <laughs> and so they said, well, okay, you run the program. So I wound up uh, running this huge program for Russell Simmons. And then when Valicia Butterfield left and went to work for Obama, um, they asked me to run the company, Hip Hop Summit Action Network, which was responsible for, you know, quiet in the East Coast, West Coast beef, all that stuff. So I had heard uh, MC Light speak at one of our Get Your Right Money Right initiatives. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, she's like inspirational. I, I wasn't really um, thinking about her as a lyricist. I was thinking about her as she spoke and she made people feel inspired. Right. And so once I was working on the program, I reached out and I asked her, I saw her tweet something about Hip Hop Sisters. Mm -hmm. And I, I asked her, did she want to start a foundation? Because... What I realized is I was a wife, I was a mother, I'm a minister, I'm, you know, president of this. I'm, but before all of that, I was and always will be hip-hop. Oh, and, uh, okay. that's just yeah. it. All right, sister. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, all right, always sister. will be hip-hop. <laughs> so I thought, wouldn't this be great? And so she, I sent her that message. She didn't respond. 
If you haven't you recognized, I, uh, yeah, she didn't respond. So I sent the same exact message. Let the word again. have it comes easy. <laughs> I sent the same message. I tell people if you want something, you got to keep going, but Ain't you can't right, be baby. too much of a stalker. Like you oh, can't yeah. be a crazy stalker. You got to keep going. You got to you got to be a good stalker that don't scare the people off. So I was a good stalker. I, I sent stalker, her the baby? message. Am I a good stalker? <laughs> <laughs> and um, so she responded and. We met at uh, Michael Jordan's Invitational, I think, that year mm-hmm. in Vegas. Mm-hmm. And I rolled out a plan for her. And I really wanted to take everything that I was doing at Chase. And I, I was building this division of this already multi-billion dollar company. I wanted to take all of that acumen and put it behind people. Mm. And I thought if I could help Light and folks like her and Lil Mama, who we manage, and Yo-Yo and that they could then become an empire. Right. And so 30 days into working with Light on the foundation, she asked me to, well, she says I asked her. I say she asked me. <laughs> semantics. She yeah. asked me, did Near I need semantics. help? Did, yeah. did I need help or in any other areas of that. the business? Yeah, and like, I said, yes. absolutely. You, you probably said yeah. something like, you know, anything I could ever do, just let me know. Well, as a matter of fact. Yes, <laughs> yes. That's, that's probably that's pretty much how That it sounds right. <laughs> right. And so within about a week, about two weeks after that, I was running her whole thing. Her whole. That's a lot of trust. Let me tell you, I, I always say to her, so first of all, I was number one at Prudential. I was five years away from retiring. I, was, I, I wasn't dreaming anymore. I was living out my dream, and I just wanted to help people. Manifestation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so to, for her to ask me or for us to come to a place where she wanted help and I wanted to help, mm-hmm. like it was, it was amazing. Mm-hmm. And what I told her is, because in the beginning, I I didn't want a salary. I didn't want to get paid. I just wanted to help and show her what her empire could be after having been in the business for 20-something years. And um, I told her, I won't quit, Mm. and I I will help you. And that was it. But I Mm. always still say, I I am just amazed because you trusted me. Like, Mm. you chose to let it happen because so many people block and destroy themselves. And so, you know, fast forward seven years later, Hip Hop Sisters Foundation has given away $1 million in scholarships. Awesome. We've had, let me tell you, we have four black women who graduated on $100,000 MC Light scholarships. Mm. We've had our first two young men graduate on $50,000 scholarships. We've got two more in college. But more so than that, we've built an empire mm. And where Light is now doing all the things that she's always wanted to do with mm-hmm. the infrastructure, with staff, with right. people. Right. Now we fight like cats and dogs. Woo. Let's be clear. Because <laughs> she's an artist. You got to get, get shit done, man. She's an artist. She's an artist. Somebody has to be the visionary. And I'm human. Somebody has to be the Because I'm like, artists are from another planet. So you like gotta, Venus. You got you to gotta, you gotta, you gotta conceive yeah. the vision. <laughs> you have to yeah. execute the vision. I always yeah. say, I'm the quarterback. I just need somebody to take the ball all the way down and score. Yeah, yeah. Th- but we just need one ball because right. that's all we gonna do right now. <laughs> she wanna throw the football, then we gonna do this. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm, that's how I am. I know. That's how I, it's I am. artists. I mean, it's I got, I, I, I can't. But no, like but thoughts, it's good, thoughts and ideas keep me up. Like yeah. they, yes, I can't. You know what I mean? Like problem solving is, you know. See, a problem is never the problem. The lack of a solution is a problem. There you go. Mm. Would you come on? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's what, yes. So I know yes. every time, everything in my life, I know the universe is giving me, I already put everything around me mm-hmm. that I need mm-hmm. to get where I'm destined to go. There you go. Because right. a lot of time, you know, in life, we, 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 we spend a lot of time looking for foreign objects and distant places and yeah. everything you need is already right there. Mm-hmm. It and it's up to you to be it's in the now right you, to recognize You have that. to identify yeah. what's missing, mm-hmm. what, what what is available, mm-hmm. and how to access what you have available to yeah. you and pull from it what you need to get where you're going. Right. Yeah. That, like, that's your only, that's it. Yeah. You know, yeah. even whether you need a car, you have everything around you, that you already, everything is already there. Yeah. You know, you might not like the things that are around you that are there, but yeah. it's inevitably going to get you to the goal. Yeah, it's for there the you purpose. Go. You know, it's for the purpose. And a lot of times, you know, 
the solution doesn't come in the the manner in which we we there think it should. Mm-hmm. That's right. You know what I mean? So I so we got to so sometimes we want to listen to our own thoughts and ideas yep. of what we thought should happen instead of accepting okay, well this must be this is what the way. Supposed to be. Yeah. Well, you know what's so crazy is I I I don't realize what a huge step it was until you say it's a big step. that it was a big deal that I trusted you. First off, it, it probably was an act of desperation, <laughs> right? It I was desperation, that. and but it that's was that's how Tamika knowing... ended up with me. <laughs> uh-huh. It was act knowing that I actually prayed. I prayed. I said, God, send me someone that can help me mm. take this to the next level. I've gotten as far as I'm going to be able to get. Mm. On, you know, by myself. Yeah. Yeah. And I, well, I, you know what? I can't even say by myself because I've had other management, but that management had also hit a plateau. Yeah. And, you know, with these ideas that sprue mm-hmm. or spew, when when someone you're working with can't, they can't keep up with when they these try to ideas. Talk, when they're trying to talk you out the idea. Yeah, they're instead trying of, to contain instead, it. Yeah, instead yeah, instead yeah. of they finding don't know what a way doing. to They're trying to compartmentalize it, it so it fits into right. what their expectation of right. you is right. instead right. of understanding. Well, the You've surpassed thing, their expectations. One mm-hmm. of the first things that I did is I helped like set up an empire and an em- enterprise that could that would work without me. Mm. which, you know, most people don't do that. They will make it work to their benefit and only to their benefit. Mm-hmm. But I showed you in the very beginning how to make it work without me, how to grow, how to have a chief operating officer, whoever that person was. Here are the limits. Here are the caps. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, I think working for Russell Simmons first in this business mm. prepared you. It prepared me for that, but it, it made, from, as from my perspective, you were limitless. Mm-hmm. And so when I was working with your team in the beginning and they were like, well, no, we're not going to do that. I was like, why? Mm-hmm. Well, she's not there yet. Well, we got to treat her like she's already there. We can't wait till she get there to treat her great. We got to treat her great here. That's right. So I treated Light and her company and what she stood for the same way people treated Russell Simmons because I saw the difference. Right. Mm-hmm. I saw the difference in you being female and him being male. Mm-hmm. And then I saw the difference in whatever the world decides the value that they place on monetary value Mm -hmm. or your net worth or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I started operating with light day one as if she was already at that level. Mm -hmm. And so everybody kind of had to step up. And so, you know, the, uh, what I think I'm most proud of is then you kind of passed the torch and you switched it around a little Mm -hmm. bit because now we help people get their money back. Mm -hmm. You know, we spend a lot of time now doing financial empowerment and I try to help people understand the more money you make, the more the IRS will take. Mm. So we teach financial literacy and financial education and how to hire your kids and your home-based business so you can write off the money that you were giving them to pay for other things. Absolutely. Now you get that money back. So you have been just an example of the, what it another is. Another glorious <laughs> benefit from Thanks. Family Hustle. That's yeah. right. Another <laughs> glorious benefit yeah. to mm-hmm. be able to hire your children. Mm-hmm. It, yeah. Hire everybody. Everybody <laughs> get a job. Nobody Every, gets. Yeah, uh, she said nobody free gets check. free money. Nobody yeah, gets free and, and money. Right off, and write off your mortgage. You, you write off yeah. your mortgage. You know See, what I mean? Now, still <laughs> talking what I'm talking. I'm right. You write off the mortgage. Off every, At least a portion even, of it. Because right. Because yeah. you shoot in the house. I'm absolutely, absolutely. shooting in the house. Mm-hmm. Yep. You get to write off your mortgage, your light bill, your gas bill, your mm-hmm. all your home office stuff. All your expenses, yeah. And so we What's great? And then, you know, I even, you know, instead of a Valentine's gift, I bought my wife, uh, uh, got my wife a nice bonus. Oh, so you, know, you have what a bonus structure. There you okay. go. You know what I'm saying? No, <laughs> I say nobody. I don't buy. Huh? You wearing it on your wrist, dog? Come on, man. You got it on your wrist, dog. I have your finger. three children. Got it on your wrist and your ring finger, yeah. love. I have three children. <laughs> nobody gets birthday presents, Christmas presents, graduation mm. presents. Nobody gets. Everybody gets a bonus on their paycheck, and then go buy your stuff. So now I get you know the what? money back. I aim. You go buy your stuff. I aim to be yeah. as progressive as you want. <laughs> You know, I don't well, think you, my wife would allow it. Well, you know what? I think it's it's a lot of people are trying to Structure. figure out how yeah. to get to the next level financially. And I tell you, have to spend less money. You have to get more money, <sighs> but then you have to get your money back. Did you hear that? You got to get your money back. What the back. first one? What the first one? You got to spend less money. 
<laughs> but when you get to a certain stage, like you should enjoy life like that. But then if you're going to spend it, can you get it back? That every time I spend a dollar, I say, can I get it back? I've never questioned that about myself because mm. of these ideas I have floating around okay. in my head. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I know it, whatever I don't have, one of these will get it for me. Come on now. And I don't need all the money at one time. Yeah, I yeah. don't need $17 billion. They up here. There I can go. cash them out and get them when I need them okay. as, you know, as necessary. Mm. I don't really... Need, I don't need a billion dollars, to be mm. honest with I you. I do. I don't really need it. I don't, I don't need really it. Need. I want I don't it really to need do it. I take it. it. You <laughs> know what I mean? Yeah. I don't really need it. I see it in my future, but I don't want it. Like, it ain't... Like, a number, as long as... If a number is what it takes for you to be satisfied, you'll never yeah. be satisfied. You're right numbers about numbers go on forever. Right. You're right. You know what I mean? I don't really need no number. There's certain things that I want for myself and my family, mm -hmm. and whatever that... Yeah. adds up to and that's that's what I'm going for right. Yeah. right I think for for me and for for I know the company Russell Simmons always says good givers are great getters mm -hmm. so we love to give back mm -hmm. so I, I want more to give back right. like I, right. I still drive a 2005 Mercedes Crazy. Well, listen, now, you know, but it looks I, good I know a guy good. now I know yeah. a guy and uh -huh. we can get you in some real no no uh -huh. she wants that car okay yeah yeah, yeah. No, she it's you, mint. Is it mint? First off, she don't even drive. We got to drive her twice down. a year. She I drive her twice a year. <laughs> yeah. She don't even drive. It's just sitting yeah. there, but it looks good. And her point... A 2005. Yeah, her point is, is she's not oh, smitten yeah, by one. the money that it takes right. to keep up with yeah. the like, I don't have to, to have car. that type yeah. of stuff. But if I can have more stuff to give to other people, mm -hmm. or like one of the things I did, we did in the company, is we kept growing the company. I will hire people as opposed to taking a pay raise because mm. I figure if I hire somebody, I can help her grow mm -hmm. broader, wider, mm -hmm. quicker, faster than just me knowing everything and trying to get it all done. Right. Right. So it's stuff like that. Yeah. I yeah. think one of the greatest assets to this working relationship is the me coming into the understanding of the importance of insurance. Mm. So we have key man insurance. If anything happens to either one of us, the company the can still, still move. Care of, yeah. you know? Yes, uh, insurance. It's funny you mentioned that. Yeah. It brings me back to a piece of Atlanta history. Okay. Uh, there's a gentleman by the name of Alonzo Herndon. Mm -hmm. Alonzo Herndon was a barber. Mm -hmm. He cut hair, but only white hair. Mm. Okay. Was he white? No, he was not. Yeah. Oh. No, he was one of us. Did he not know how to cut black hair? No, no, no. It was oh. a, it was a it, it was, was a strategic move to get him in the rooms, hearing the conversations gotcha. about the things mm. that were wow. being held away from us. Mm -hmm. So he cut white people's hair, and in there he found out different things about you know uh, financial literacy mm -hmm. and different areas of entrepreneurship. One thing he identified was that there was no insurance mm -hmm. for black people. Black people didn't have insurance. That's right. Uh, and so what he did was one of the guys, I guess, who hair he cut, uh, they they sold or managed or owned an insurance company, something like that. And he basically brokered a deal with them where he white labeled their insurance and offered it to black people. Gotcha. On like, you know, Alonzo Herndon insurance yeah. for us. You oh, know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he he became one of the largest you know entrepreneurs in in mm. in the city, mm -hmm. uh, and Alonzo right. Herndon built like you know how when you go to Atlanta a lot of people say, you know it's just a different vibe here. It's a lot of it's a lot of black success. It's mm -hmm. a lot of entrepreneurs. It's mm -hmm. a lot of people who expect to be great. Mm -hmm. That came from people like Alonzo Herndon. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that I, I mean. When you spoke on insurance, I just saw the things, or should I say the tables, they don't want us to pull up there you a go. chair to. Come on now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, but 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 mm -hmm. even still, yeah. long before we even thought of it, there were already people mm -hmm. who were already working toward pulling up a chair there. I mm -hmm. love it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just want us to learn how to pass our wealth on to generations. So that but when we talk about insurance, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, that's the thing. Now, to mm -hmm. make sure that the, the, the next generation is, is set up in a better yeah. position than you were. And yeah. that's how most of them acquire 
their wealth mm. through insurance. Through insurance. It, insurance and then annuities. Well, see, the thing about money. insurance, man, every time we have an insurance claim, they're trying to just, you know, create contingencies and reasons not to pay me. Oh, you right. talking about a different kind of insurance? <laughs> just, you talking about right. life insurance? Yeah, life insurance. Okay, yeah, that too. Yeah. But I, mean, yeah. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna know how that's gonna work out. That's on right. y'all. Yeah, y'all yeah. figure that out. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't know how that's gonna work out for yeah. y'all. Good luck though. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but you know, insurance is always, especially the black people, mm-hmm. felt like. It means somebody gonna come kill you if they get if you get insurance. Nah, not really, not even that. I ain't talking about life insurance. I'm just oh, talking about insurance, insurance. Period. Okay. Every time, let's let's take auto insurance. Mm-hmm. That's right. Every time you have an accident, accident, if you did, and it's not, you don't have more than one accident a year, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. unless you're Tamika. Um, <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> uh, but but when you have accidents, and it's you know far and few in between. As always, a bunch of adjusters and, and right. investigators mm-hmm. trying to prove that why. You didn't do it. Hey, why don't I hire investigators to prove why I should pay you every month? That <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying. You know and so saying? it always feels a little, a little shaky. Yeah. What was interesting yeah. is I've you know had a little fender bender here and there, mm-hmm. and in New York, it took me over forty days. To, to get reimbursed mm. in California, I, what did I get? I got paid. I came outside and the rims <laughs> and the tires were off my car and they were sitting on Coca Cola crates. Mercedes my car was sitting on crates. It was sitting on uh-huh. crates, you and I was like, admire oh, wait. that kind of ingenuity you know, from her, my people, I though. Just, I was I'm sure they didn't have her proper her condo tools. building. Let me tell you, I had to take. Uh, I was well, double taken like yeah. this shit well, what ain't for real. So she called <laughs> and they were giving her the runaround. Right. I was like, give me all your stuff. Give me, this was early on we were working together. Right. I said, I need all your information. I was like, what's she going to do? I called because <laughs> you have to know what to say. First of all, you can go to a location near you and pick up a check. Mm-hmm. That was Wednesday. You were frustrated. Blah, blah, blah. You went and picked up a check on Friday. You did what so I'm you saying. There, there action, was a, a people. $10, yeah. check. Action. Ready. We need action. I, I think Deliverable. And sometimes it's just the type of insurance you have, really. As the insurance provider, you have entrusted with your account. Yes. Correct. Now, mm-hmm. now the wealth experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. That is a collaboration uh, of the minds of you. To... Actually, Wealth Experience was Lynn's uh, creation prior to Hip Hop Sisters. Okay. So, but when we uh, co founded Hip Hop Sisters, we had the discussion. And when she told me what the Wealth Experience was about, and at this time, Kelly Price was sitting there at the table, mm-hmm. and we were just in awe of what it was that the Wealth Experience was able to do for women and right. empowering them. And so we said, no, we got to do this. And she was like, okay, let's, Lynn was like, okay, let's plan it out to do it in a few years. We were like, no, we're going to do it in January. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. It don't take all day to do nothing. No. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was a uh, womanhood expansion, assets, leadership, transformation, and health. Mm-hmm. Now the men have all like, we want to come. Whoa, 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 Let's not so, do that. That's guys. the acronym. <laughs> let's not well, do that. Yeah. Guys. So, so yeah. we changed it. The W can be wisdom. Okay. Um, Excellent. But it's the first weekend of the year after New Year's Eve. Mm-hmm. Every year. Whatever the first weekend is after New Year's Eve, that's mm-hmm. when we do the wealth experience. Because when you bring together people who are, who want to grow, who want to nurture, who want to build, right? The first weekend, mm-hmm. it transformation, mm-hmm. and that's what happens every year. It's yeah. like transformation. All it, right. I can't even explain it except that you come and you connect, and right. people leave with business partnerships. They start business companies, plans. business plant plans, plant seeds of success, plant seeds. But the difference between the wealth experience and other conferences, people don't just hear good information; they actually start to implement. While they're gotcha. there. Yeah. they start to implement their business plan or their financial strategy or their yeah. Let me yeah. tell you, we should oh. take our daughters. We would love that it because be I mean, Sheila E has come, Salt awesome. has come, awesome. uh, Eva Mars, like mm-hmm. so many people. Yeah, Yo Yo, you, Let I us mean, see. Faith Evans, Let us see, Erica yeah. Campbell, Nikki Gilbert, yeah. to name oh, a few. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And now let so, me ask you this: so, so the Wealth Experience started out as a women's group, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. That she had in 2008. Is when yeah. it okay, women's. started as a men. women's group. However, it has morphed into... The men are coming. Because yeah. the men were like, we were coming home to our men, and they were like, Hey. We need some information right. too. Right. You know, <laughs> we missing then, out. Let's talk a little bit about yeah. the disparity or the, the disconnect between men and women and how we communicate. Now, this is a personal journey that I happen to be on simply because <laughs> <clears throat> you can't take me nowhere. I, I mean, I don't. I mean, I I I, I am a man's man mm-hmm. that was raised by men's men mm-hmm. of of you know generations before me, mm-hmm. and um. I very, I guess, unintentionally Mm -hmm. stumble into areas of Mm. Mm -hmm. objectivity. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I mean? Just speaking naturally and sincerely Mm -hmm. the way that I was taught to speak. And, Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, it's not always... Received so well, well mm-hmm. by the women, but see, it's the thing is, <laughs> women who know me uh-huh. have absolutely no problem with me, mm-hmm. correct? Because they know me, mm-hmm. correct? But it's like women who only see headlines of things that I say. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They, 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 they take adverse opinion. How can I do some form of? sensitivity training <laughs> right you know like 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 diversity like a diversity mm-hmm. uh advancement coach well like you, what do you, you think you that should. most men what, what do most men need to know mm-hmm. about cuz i mean she's going to say most men need to know that women are crazy See, well, so, listen, wait a minute, stop. <laughs> this is my thing. We all talk about equality, don't we, yeah. baby? Yeah. We speak uh, on equality. <laughs> now, equality goes both ways because, first thing, if I would have stopped and said what she was thinking, mm-hmm. that would have been controlling. Oh. If I would have said, wait, what she's going to say is. Oh, well, that's my right. sister. Uh, yeah, see, but, but this is my wife. Yeah. Right. So right. I don't understand. So if we're gonna be equal, That's how right. is it that light can say something on on, on behalf of Dr. Lynn, can't, but I can't say that on behalf of Tamika. But Tamika well, can stop. What room but you're if in. Tamika were to stop and say, "Well, what my husband's gonna say is," mm-hmm. you know, what I mean, there's a lot of gray areas it's that gray require area. some. It, it and is and there are some. It's some stuff is just not equal. I always tell people, God, people say, well, it, this is not fair. It, life ain't fair. Mm. God ain't fair. He's just, but it ain't fair. <laughs> Everybody don't get the same amount. <laughs> so some things aren't fair. You but get I, what you deserve. You, you, or what you earn, or you have to you deal get what with you the deserve. consequences. Uh, it, not necessarily all at one time. Yeah. Not right when you want it. Yes. Mm-hmm. But over time, mm-hmm. it all balances out right. to where you get what you deserve. Yeah. So you what were right. you going to say? Well, first, in, in terms of, in direct response to men and women in communication, mm-hmm. first of all, everybody needs to just understand women are crazy. Oh. And men are irrational. Oh. Well, whoa, 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 whoa. That's, 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 that's okay. Irrational. Crazy and irrational are kind of the, I want to say something thing. else, but it, I don't. Well, we're not telling you. You can say correct. it. You can say it. Women are crazy. Men are dumb. Y'all be doing some dumb stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I've been married for 25 years. And I just look at my husband like, she'll be looking at me like, girl, what? I was like, you know, I just got to a point in my life. I just got to a point where I would just look at the people and say, he was born that way. I'm sorry. <laughs> I stopped getting mad. But we are also off because we'll say yeah, yes and we mean no. We'll say no, we mean yes. Do you want me to get you something to eat? No, but I really do. Like we, you know, we kind of mm. go through our things. So, mm-hmm. um, but I think women, we say too much. Men don't say enough. That's see, Well, now. No, that's, that's a not different me. type of... Okay. That's not me. Okay. I articulate... But do you listen? Very well. That's the problem. See, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Y'all don't listen. But I don't listen in much because I feel that like... Much. I'm Sit a strategist. Down, 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 down. Now, hear, hear what I'm saying. <laughs> you a strategist. This is the reason why... I, th- listen, this is the reason why I feel like... Because <laughs> no one in my family, no one around me on my journey could have... <laughs> got me here. Like, this all began with my thoughts of what I felt I needed to do for myself, uh-huh. by myself, mm-hmm. and I had to implement these, you know, the, these contingencies as I move forward. So when you have 
started that way and been successful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's all on, you know, kind of like an instinct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if I get an instinct that you may be speaking in opposition of, I'm like, okay, should I trust them or should I trust the same instinct that got me this far? Mm-hmm. And so that's my problem. That's kind of mm. where I, she doesn't like what I'm saying at all. No, I don't like <laughs> Let me no, tell you. I, I, my, I'll said, say I something like to that. my husband and he'll say something. I'll be like, did you hear anything? I like. It's like you're speaking a whole other language. Like he didn't even listen at all to nothing. Right. right. It's just, yeah. But want you to listen, though. Oh, my God. Come on. You see what I'm saying? Listen. Can you just hear what I'm saying? No, I can't hear what I, you're saying. I, I, I you honestly, hear what I'm saying? I honestly <laughs> feel like the person with the best ideas no, should, should speak about about every, every, every time, every now and then, I come up with the best ideas. No, and sometimes you come I up with the best ideas. Right. I do not object that. I do not object to it. I'm saying the person with the best idea should lead. That's it. How, how you know who got the best idea? Well, I think you gotta hear them. Experience, you gotta hear them. gut. Your gut be wrong a lot now. See, oh one thing about God. me now, I can tell one you what's thing going about on. me uh-huh. now. I can tell you what's going <laughs> Let on. Let me get it out. Uh-huh. Yeah, see this. Yeah, see this. We could little... see before we get to the end of the road. Yeah, it's a little tyrant. Y'all get yeah. to the end of the road and be like, whoa. No, sometimes. see, that's not the case. I don't. Okay, think. You, sometimes. No, because I tell her, listen to me, girl. You shouldn't do this, and this is why. Mm-hmm. You, it, it, this is gonna happen. Mm-hmm. It's gonna cause this to happen. Mm-hmm. Then it's gonna cause that to happen, mm-hmm. and then you're gonna be in a bad spot. Mm-hmm. And cut two. Things happen exactly the way I said they happen. And when she turned to me and say, "Well, what do it? I do now?" I will say this. <laughs> Maybe you made it happen. Yeah. Did you oh, speak it's it? my Did fault. Did you speak it into existence? <laughs> I will say this. I do. I will ask my husband. I'll be like, listen, what should I do? I already know that what I'm thinking probably isn't right. I shouldn't do it. I want to mm. cut somebody out. Blah, 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 blah. 25 years of marriage taught you that? Twenty, And, and he'll say, and, and, I, and years, I'll baby, listen to what years. he has That's to say. That's what I got to look forward to. I don't want to listen, but I will listen because he's not going to lead me wrong. Mm-hmm. But sometimes you all just... I don't know. It's like, what is happening over there? But the thing yeah. is, I mean, I, 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 I feel every marriage and some relationships, you have entrusted each other with, you know, the duty and responsibility mm-hmm. of carrying one's best interest. Yes. Right. So at some point, you got to let me do my job. But listen, you did what you brought said, me here to do. Mm. Yeah. Trust each other, so that means you got to do the same thing that you asking me to do. Exactly. Absolutely. Yes. You uh-huh. tell me all the time things that I need to do, and does and he... I do them. Oh, is that right? Everything you complain to me about, <laughs> I take. Like you know, she might think that I'm not listening, but I, like she'll tell me like, "Yo, you need to do more of this. You need to do more of that. And you ain't doing enough of this." You ain't need... And I'm like, man. We be want you quiet. to acknowledge that. <laughs> Watching no, no, no. TV. I'm, I'm reading. That's the part. I'm writing. Um, you know what I mean? And and you know. So would it be better if she said, "Excuse me, can we have a moment to discuss this?" And you didn't feel interrupted with what it is that you you're know doing? what it seems like. Yes, but no. Okay, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> you just much of nothing. Yeah, see that's what I'm saying. See, <laughs> yeah. listen, look, l- listen. It's let me like... tell you something. Let me tell you something. I'm getting in touch with Tip. I got my chi time. Yeah, I got my chi time. Oh I got to God. meditate. Uh, Russell Simmons taught me that. I got to take time. Ta- I don't know if Russell that Simmons, works. Uh, Russell Simmons and and Diana Ross told me. Honey, you got to save some for yourself. You see what I'm saying? So sometimes I'm just thinking. I'm just figuring it out. I'm just figuring it out. Just just tossing, rummaging through my ideas mm-hmm. and inserting, you know, challenges and and uh, adversities and coming up with strategies and, and solutions. And, and in the midst of that, like I might just be sitting here doing nothing. And and she'll she'll come in assuming I'm doing nothing, when I'm actually doing something. Right, right, right. But she wouldn't know mm-hmm. that. She have to trust me. Maybe she so. have a little sign that says I'm thinking. Nah. That. <laughs> Not at yeah. All. Look, whatever she says, man, is welcome. Is welcome uh, uh, input and insight. Okay. Sometimes you all just get kind of controlling for no reason. Whoa, like, what is controlling? Yeah. What well, is controlling? Let me give you an example. <laughs> 
last week, we, me and my husband fell out. Light came over to the house oh, over some bacon. <laughs> <laughs> It was real. It was let me, we was about it was to real up in there. Hell, hell, oh, y'all y'all fall out bacon. after twenty five years about because some bacon. I smelt the bacon. Oh, is that bacon? Yeah, I got four pieces for you. That's what he said to me. I got four he said pieces he had for four you. Four pieces. I want to fight. <laughs> I want to fight. Wait a minute. How many pieces are there? Oh my god. He didn't well, want to give that up this first. Is, this is, this is, <laughs> yes. This, how you gonna this tell is me? ridiculous. But how yeah. you gonna That's, tell that me? That just means everything else is pieces. going right. <laughs> you got four pieces for me. And then he wouldn't. And then later he said he was joking. So later on, I was like, like, was he joking? She was like, no. I'm like, why didn't you say something? I ain't getting in that. <laughs> no, I'm not about to get hey, in look, that. No. <laughs> but I give you an example of you and I. We had a, uh, a similar tift. So when we first got <laughs> together, right, uh, I ain't, I stopped eating pork when I was in third grade. Right. So I met her. She ate everything. Mm-hmm. You know, she ate pig tail. Right. So, <laughs> I'm good with pork. I don't so know look, right, I'm me. telling you, it's, it's, a, it's a horrible poison. You shouldn't, mm. you shouldn't digest it. But anyway, mm. uh, I'm telling her, and it happened to be in one of my incarcerated stints, which didn't make the news go over any better. Mm-hmm. I said, hey, listen, no, you were pregnant. You were pregnant. You were trying to get you're her You were pregnant to... with King. I'm like, listen, don't, like, digest, like, pork and that kind of stuff because it's bad for you. And you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't do it. And I'm like, man, you know what? You're going to be with me. You may as well just stop eating pork because we together. And, mm. you know, you don't want to. And right. she's like, I ain't stopping eating that bacon. I ain't finna stop eating that bacon. You can't tell me what to eat. Bacon. If you don't want to eat it, I mean, I ain't got to eat it. And, <laughs> that was a fight, Okay, bro. wait a minute. Bacon? Cut to, <laughs> cut to, let me see, it's 2004, it was about 2000, about 10 years later, she comes and say, yeah, well, I'm going to stop eating. I stop eating uh, pork and beef and uh, mm-hmm. I just eat fish now. You don't even like fish, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so basically it just had to be your idea. See, uh, and that to me is a problem. It's well, problematic. Why not, why not just be happy I that saw she's... This. But what I'm saying yeah. is, all right, listen, all right, so the wise person uh, learns from their own experiences, okay? Uh, a, a genius learn from the experience of others. Okay. So, whereas you could have tapped in to my higher, my heightened <laughs> vibration at the time, <laughs> and, and, oh and, and you would have saved yourself... All those years of health and wellness, but you just you just refused to listen to me out of spite, no less. And you just I'm she not just gonna was do enjoying it because he bacon. didn't say right. just enjoying, enjoying the bacon. Who she enjoys was... poison? Wait, first of all, well, wait, wait a minute. Right. I take that back. I take that back. It's, it's, As that I said, yeah, it tastes well, good. It tastes yeah, good. Bacon, I mean, you know, ain't people who wrong. eat bacon they so my, rarely my, ever ever this, stop. This is what I told them because all. it's so good to them. I like don't eat anything. Like- Sometimes <laughs> my grandmother just passed. Uh, six months ago, she was 98. She was mm. in her right mind. Mm. She was not sick. Okay. She passed away. I prayed she would with no illness. My grandmother ate everything. Uh, everything. Let's see. In From moderation. The to the tutor. Okay. But look, she though. ate everything in That's moderation. That's the same with my mama. She's like 74, and she won't stop eating none of that because she feel like I've been eating this all my life. Now, I'm this is the main bad. thing, right. though. This but is the, this the, is the main is thing. Mm-hmm. It is. Yeah. I agree. It's, it's not the differently. same pork. It's, it's not different. the same beef. It's not the same chicken. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that it's chicken different. Is mm-hmm. So what it's your grandmama ate? Either. It's not. It's yes, way absolutely. different. Yes, but it's all I'll take my chances with a fish. Why? Because it's in the water. So, but what water? Ah, yeah. very, yeah. very. Yeah. I don't eat. And I'm doing. I'm is, doing a mercury cleanse out, right now. Oh. If you cut out mercury if toxicity, you cut out pork. You got to cut out shrimp. You got to cut out crabs. You got to mm. cut out lot. Like, what are we gonna eat? So I might as well just plant base. Oh no. <laughs> they First said all, I eat up all the ground. Yeah, That's she, what she I said. need all of the vegans to come up with their own food. There's no such thing as vegan chicken. <laughs> That's chicken. Chicken is chicken. <laughs> come up with your own name. There's no such thing as a vegan burger. You got something do else. You, do it's you, not a burger. Okay, look, do you not do you not incorporate the science that goes with digesting an animal's fear? Cause as that animal dies, it it is fearful. Like, Cause after you, if you if you are a cow or a chicken or whatever, you have a brain and you can 
You know what I mean? You can conceive conceivably recognize danger. Yes. So, as okay, you, you, let's say you we, we're all cows. All four of us, well, six of us, including cameraman. We're sitting at the we're sitting in the in the barn, and you know. Every time we see one of us walk out, they mm-hmm. never walk back in. Right, right. Mm-hmm. So when a motherfucker come get me to walk me out, <laughs> I'm I'm I ain't in. I ain't yeah. into this. No, yeah. I ain't into this. Yeah. I don't know what it's lead to. I don't know what going. You're on. absolutely yeah. right. You see what I'm saying? And there is documentation of them not wanting to go. You dig what if I'm saying? If you've ever seen video on it, they are fighting for their lives because they've they seen don't 17 go. of their closest friends, family mm. members. Yeah. And homies walk out of this barn door and never return. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. So I think that, you know, we don't want to digest no. F- yeah. It's sad. Yeah. It it's is. Sad, but it tastes good. Well, see, <laughs> Beer tastes so good. You're to such me, an what's American. even more weird is when they, when they promote or advertise to children. Mm. It's like they'll show Chick Fil A and they'll show a chicken mm-hmm. animated, and it's then you're gonna eat, eat, eat this cute chicken, right? It's like <laughs> well, I think all animals are for eating. I don't care what. <laughs> <we're eating. laughs> Damn. So I, I'm she said all animals. Damn, no, everything. Like, Hamsters, you know, gerbils, everybody, everything. You know what I mean? Anything. Skunks, cats, the whole, cats dogs, possums, you know, iguanas, cats. You know None of this person. Tart, feather it, skin it, and serve <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, serve it. Serve it on Nah, up. I can't do that, man. <laughs> no, so, because, you know, I think that, you know, the universe has already created, like, somewhat of a biometric ecosystem mm-hmm. to where everything that eats everything benefits from the thing that it eats. Right. Uh, when you're talking about meat, you get what is it, second-hand mm-hmm. yeah. uh, nutri- n- nutrients. Mm-hmm. So, a pig. A pig, all of its life, grows up eating slop, mud, feces, mm-hmm. all that stuff. Just... Okay, now that's what a pig eat. Mm-hmm. So, you're getting the second-hand byproduct of, of his that. nutrients. Mm-hmm. So, as you digest the pig, you will receive the slop, the you know, all of the mm-hmm. stuff that the mm-hmm. pig ate over its time. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's why things like Wagyu, Japanese Wagyu, mm-hmm. they put those cows on hammocks and feed them grass all they like. Make it nice and soft. And put a blindfold over their head before mm-hmm. they knock them off. In wow. some kind of way, they feel that improves the meat. Right. I don't trust it. Um, yeah. So I just, I just, I, I know that there is a direct correlation between beef, pork, and now chicken to to uh uh toxicity yeah. that co- that causes carcinogens I, that, that inevitably cause cancer, cause cancer mm-hmm. and not to mention high blood pressure, diabetes, yeah. hypertension, so on and so forth, mm-hmm. which is killing us quicker than cops here. Yeah. Right. And so. now kidney. Now no. kidney. Oh, said, yeah, yeah. Not I, drinking I think no within water. the I drink 20, no 2023, they said the 70% of the African-American population will have had problems with their kidneys. Mm. Yeah. yeah, we got to do better. Mm-hmm. I think that we everybody's be looking for a quick fix. Nobody really wants to step up and really mm-hmm. address the issues that plague the, the, the community mm-hmm. today. Um and that's why I thank both of you guys for your efforts, your energy, thank your you. expertise. Um, have either of you found financial empowerment and money difficult conversations for women in particular to have? Uh, well, you know, probably amongst themselves, but I get to see them deal with the Medea of money, the financial expert, mm. which is Lynn. The Medea of money. The Medea uh. of money. She's a financial guru. Well, what? For, the answer to that question is yes. The very first time I was asked to speak to a group of women about money, it was uh, the top paid African-American women in the country. These were the senior vice presidents of all these major corporations mm-hmm. coming together. The average salary in the room was about $600,000 a year, and um, there were over 300 women in the room. So I was invited to come and say the Susie Orman message, what you should do with your money. You should save. You should invest. And I couldn't. I got in the room, Hmm. and I told the story of growing up in the projects, living check to Monday, uh, trying to, you know, living beyond your means, all that kind of stuff. 
And those women, the first woman, she was manicured, dressed nice, all of that. Her hands went up, and she mm. started crying in the, the whole room. And, what was she crying about? They were Man. crying because I was telling the truth that they were hiding. Whoa. So they were making money, but they were broke. Yes, indeed. They were making money, and they were broke. And so I always go back to that day because, again, I was supposed to talk about investing and clean topics but i just started telling the truth Mm -hmm. and i think it gave them permission to start telling the truth and Mm -hmm. so many understand this black women are the most educated people on the planet absolutely more bachelor's degrees phds than any other group of people but we're the brokest Hmm? we have the lowest net worth the average net worth Hmm? of a black woman from age 35 to 50 is a dollar well that's 35 to 50 what about 18 to 35 18 to 35 it's about them stripper yields I'm telling you I'm just joking I'm just joking I'm joking I'm joking that was a joke see that's the kind of shit I can't say it was a good joke to me that was a good joke to me but you're not even laughing but but I don't you don't laugh at your own jokes so how do you assess whether it's good if, if other it's, people if, I, if, if it pops good, it pops pop, up it into pops my head and I'm like, mm, that's intriguing. People yeah. wouldn't say that. Yeah, you but know? it's only funny so, if other people laugh. No, it's only funny if you're thinking of something it's that everyone joke. else is thinking, but you have the nuts no to say it. No one else. That's fear. Who else was thinking it's that? It's fear and intimidation. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> I so mean, but, but, but if you were to say, if you were to say those are modeling years, or if you were to say those are student years, nobody would get offended. Oh, but students. But, nobody but, would really get it. We get it when you say it like that. Ah, that's, that's, that's free why money. I said that's it money like, that doesn't even have to be taxed. It's not free now. It's not free. Well, well, it comes with something, but I'm talking about free from the government. If mm. you decide. No, you could have been a preacher. Well, we, you said stripper. Let's stay on that. Okay. <laughs> because they get their money and they do whatever they want to oh, no, do. They gotta be they're supposed to be taxed. You got to get licenses and all that kind of stuff. They're supposed to be taxed. Yeah. What they report for their taxation different is different. Oh, I don't, you know, that's up there between them and the government. Right. So, but she said 5000 5000 It's about 5000 mm-hmm. uh, White Americans is 112000 Asian Americans is eighty ninety thousand. 90000 Even Hispanic Americans are in the... Fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. Why range. is that? Because we don't own anything. We don't own anything. So here, here's, here's what this you is own like. half of what any of your husbands own. That's what I see. That's just the start. If right. You have your own talents, ambitions, uh, 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 and, and and your own ways to make a difference and create change within the world. But before any of that, mm-hmm. you have this. So I don't understand how that is possible with men dropping like flies left and right. Black women buy purses and clothing Mm. and shoes Mm. and things that see. My wife just she make me buy that shit for her, and she spend her money on Mm. on on property and shit. This is what I keep Mm. telling you all: you all are very small microcosm of the planet. Like you are. You, you, celebrities. Oh, us. Celebrities. Oh, yeah, okay, celebrities, got you. Mm-hmm. And you, you, because you are the president of the company, you see all the emails that come in mm-hmm. every single day. I get emails all day. If you saw my emails, mm. people who can't pay their light bill, can't pay their this, can't do this, mm-hmm. like people are really, 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 really I struggling. thought she's got in my emails before. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> right, yeah. Like they're, they're sending, they can't. But at first, you know what? Mm-hmm. At first I used to, I used to, I I discounted that for people being, dare I say, lazy. Mm. And this was back in, let, let's say between 2007 and 2014. I began to notice, like, whoa, motherfuckers fucked up out here for real. Mm. It's like, bad. It ain't like... Just because before, whenever somebody asked for money, the automatic assumption was they just want to get some wine. They just want to get a beer. They just mm. want to get some dope. They mm. just want to. Now, they want some it's kind of like, man, these folk yeah. really ain't got nowhere to go and nothing to do. Not because <laughs> they own dope. Not because they uh, uh, uh an alcoholic. But because life just done thrown them too many curveballs. Mm-hmm. And then we don't, they don't trust anybody. So when she says I'm the Medea money, like I'm literally... 
I don't talk nice to people. I don't. You I, talk I, very I, nice I to love us. people, but <laughs> I don't like them. I don't like people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking nice to y'all. That's a great place to be. Now, look, I love people, but I don't like them. And literally, like one day, one You're lady, sick. she's emailing back and forth. I don't have any money. I need to try to figure out, okay, pay $49, get in the coaching program. I don't have $49. You lying. You're a cynic. You're lying. That's You're exactly, lying that that's exactly what I am. Yeah. I expect the worst from people. Uh, no, 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 no. I don't expect the worst. They're giving the worst. No, but they're I, saying I need. They need but help. But after so long, yeah, you expect it. Mm. Actually, I don't expect it, I which do. is why it pisses me off when they give it anyway. I do. I expect it. In my, really? And my listen, man. Let me tell. I have like a a three to five second rule, man. So and you what come needs up to, to me happen? in the first three to five seconds. Whatever this is, mm-hmm. I'm either going to be intrigued enough and and just have a a, a genuine authentic mm-hmm. want need to listen right but after or 3 seconds I, man it's some bullshit i'm mm-hmm. gone and most of the time 95% of the time i'm going to be right mm-hmm. 95 if you were to like for real she says that i'm an asshole <laughs> Tamika always says you've been such an asshole to people no People <laughs> no. are walking up to me saying things that don't make sense, and I am you can't basically, yeah. I'm presenting them back to me what they said. Like, mm-hmm. for instance, yeah. somebody come up to me, is that you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can't take that. Right. Um, no. Uh, she, as opposed to who else, bro? Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Like, when, when people come up and ask, uh, uh, man, you look just I'm like- your favorite. I'm your favorite fan, or uh, 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 you my biggest fan. <laughs> Uh, I don't that. think that they just nervous. Exposure. They just nervous. Yeah, yeah but I. You see, he don't never take that into consideration. Oh. I, t- I talk to people. I, I I take that. I take my time. I say, <clears throat> you pick and choose. Well, my nah. thing is specifically people who come asking for help, and then when you tell them what they that they actually have to help themselves to, mm. then they don't. It's like, oh, well, I don't have any money. You're lying because you mm. they have to send in their you budget. Buy your you buy just. Pay- Come on, you buying your weed, you buying your reefer, you going out, you eating, you did, and that's that's what I say to them. I will pick up the phone and say you're lying. And your you lace do fronts. have forty dollars. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, know, yeah. you so, spend more money on wigs nowadays. I do not. I you do spend not. more money on wigs nowadays. I ain't never seen nobody with such an illustrious head of hair. They want to go and get wigs to pull over their head. Just to change the color. We want to change up a little She's bit. She's trying to keep I it feel fresh, you, man. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we just want to change up. I think you know you like a blonde head. Oops. Just stop it. So, just stop so, it. so people yes, are yeah. struggling yeah. because they one don't have information. Two, when they get the information, they don't trust it. I always said if I was actually an alligator shoe wearing liar mm. Mm. telling lies, you'd be I'd a have preacher. A, oh, oh. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> he's telling the truth you know, now I am an ordained minister hey man you, now it's a difference like, between yeah. being a minister and being a preacher yeah mm. I'm like now, a preacher I always tell people I, I don't think I'm church material because it's some stuff that I, I just can't get with uh, I feel like a preacher doing. is like business Mm. That's well, like business. You know, church is a business. All of it Absolutely. is business. Yeah. All of it is And business. if you forget the business, you won't be open long. Yeah, you, uh, it is a business. Uh, it's, at the end of the day, it just comes down to trying to do the right thing. So people don't have information. Then they don't trust the information they get. Then they, case in point. Okay, so this is how Antoine Walker, the NBA player, mm-hmm. was broke two years after leaving mm. the NBA. He had a $112 million contract. I remember Antoine Walker. Wanna, what wanna, people don't understand is he had to pay fifty five million. Yes. Mm-hmm. He had to pay fifty five million in taxes. Damn. But if you get the money on January first of twenty twenty, mm-hmm. tax is not due until twenty twenty one. That's right. That money is gone. He don't have that money now. Well, and he had to pay twenty percent in management, agency fees, maybe twenty five. Sure. So fifty five million is gone at hundred and twelve million. Twenty five million is gone for Matt. So what he's left with and then what he did, he bought a car for this one, gave this one an allowance. Nobody, so nobody knows how to actually keep 
the money. I mm. question. Yeah. I, I, I question in cases like that. Mm -hmm. If your management that you pay twenty mm. percent for did not make you aware of they the don't. fact mm. that they don't. well see then that I now I'm going to raise my hand yep. at your request for mm -hmm. these commissions. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because you're not you're not adequately informing me or, or, or instructing me on how I should be. Like you're yeah. not performing your managerial duties. Let me yeah. say Most of them you. don't. It's yeah. only a few of you But we all. pay them anyway. Mm. But it's only a few of you all. Well, that stops today. To oh. Operate. <laughs> mm -hmm. At the level that you all operate and Russell and, you know, whomever else. Russell, who's an majority, incredible mentor to so many, by the yeah. way. Yeah, I just wanna, I want to put that out there, man. For generations, he's yeah. been an incredible mentor to people and guiding uh, and leading by example yeah. on how how to create businesses and develop industries mm -hmm. out of our creations. Right. Very few of you have that level of acumen, mm -hmm. of, you know, gut, right. wherewithal to stand right. up to say, hey, the great majority of people are struggling and either participating in their own failure or watching other people fail and not saying anything. Like, it's just, mm. it's just messed a up. A lot of people, man, will rather rest comfortably within the expectation of their failure mm. than push past that There you go. That Ooh, that's the other thing. Wow. And have an actual chance to win. Yeah. The number of people that, so then they reach out for help. Mm -hmm. And then you say, okay, you can do it. No, I can't do it. Well, what you call me for? Well, right. Whether like, you believe you? you can or whether you believe you, you can't, can. either way, you're you right. right. You're right. right. There you go. Yeah, you, what you believe will be. So what well, I, I still also believe think, mm -hmm. is that it's people like me who will keep staying in there and trying to convince people that they mm -hmm. can. Right. And it, it's and, hard, but. And then also, you know, you are a teacher. Right? We call her the. Minister, preacher, preacher, gangster, gangster teacher. Ain't that's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Minister, preacher, preacher gangster, gangster, teacher. I like that. Yeah. I like it. It's too. gonna stick. That, that yeah. all. Dr. She Lee. handles that's all of that. Minister, preacher, gangster, gangster teacher. teacher. All right, then. There you go. And and so you know. Let the church say amen. Working with Lynn, um, you know, she's like extremely dynamic when it comes to taxes. Oh. Uh, and do so, tell. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Mm. Well, she's well, uh, yeah. followed mm. Sandy yeah. Botkin, okay, and she'll tell you who Sandy Botkin is. But I am one who reaps the benefit mm. of that when it's tax preparation time, because right. that's another thing accountants won't tell you. Right, is all of the things that you can write off that are legal, yeah, and uh, ethical, uh, and a lot of yeah. them, a lot of a lot of your. How do I say? Business managers, yeah. if you will, money handlers, business managers, whatever. A lot of them, if they have an illustrious catalog of clients, mm -hmm. and here you are with your little bitty, something. your particular yep. your discrepancy mm -hmm. and a challenge that you need help yep. with, mm -hmm. that they could help you with if they just chose to write off certain things that they chose not to. Thank but you. they don't want to push the envelope Thank because you. they don't want to jeopardize all the, the other clients. Uh, client. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, see, that then shows me you're not operating with my best interest there you in go. heart. Mm -hmm. That's but it. for most of us, it's too late before we realize that. Mm. And, and, and ain't nobody got the answer. Ain't nobody up under the gun but us. Well, I'm going to tell you mm -hmm. the 2018 tax code changes that uh -oh. people are now just experiencing when they file their taxes last year. The the game is about to change and people are going to be struggling worse it's, than ever before. Well, listen, they they clamp down really I, I, hard I, I, unless you have a business. If you have a business and you know the rules. Mm -hmm. If you have a That's business it. and you know the rules, because this is a guy I'm having, we I'm, write off everything. It's an exceptional tax time yeah. right now. Exactly, with the present president. Yeah, would you? If I tell anything, people if there's anything to be, but I, but 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 but, but, but. there is a but. Mm -hmm. Yes. Nothing is worth my self respect and my dignity. There you go. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You can't you can't you can't pay me enough to where you gonna disrespect me there you go. and my culture if, and my heritage. If yeah. it were just about business, right. that would be fine. Absolutely. Yeah. But because we are people yeah. yeah. Because we care about our people and our community, then it forces us into yeah. another So scenario. when the tax code changed, it hurt the great majority, millions and millions of people. 
but it made life for us great. It's like the, yeah, it, it, and, it, and what people don't really expanded. understand is mm-hmm. for people like us who operate on this side of the business spectrum, mm-hmm. and we speak out against the present administration. You gotta understand, <laughs> we're not doing this shit for us, right? It's about the I'm people. I'm actually cool with this shit. <laughs> that, like this shit is not really that bad for me. Mm, mm. But yes. it's not I just am about you. A true understander of what can happen to one can happen to all. Mm-hmm. There you go. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I'm not just going to rest in the comfort of my luxury mm-hmm. right. uh, knowing that I have cousins, uncles, aunties, mm-hmm. brothers, sisters, People. nieces, nephews, Community. children, yep. sons, daughters that have to go out and, you know, they got to live in the world that we have accepted for there ourselves. Mm-hmm. And if go. we don't challenge the world and expect better results, mm-hmm. then they're going to be out there just living in bullshit. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're and right. I think that, that to me is what, you know, that's what pushes me toward making a difference right. more yeah. so. Right. It wasn't until my kids got to where they started leaving the house on their own with their own, like, things to do. All right, Dad, I'm going to the mall. All right, Pops, I'm going here. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going there. Then it's like, damn, these motherfuckers get pulled over any time. I just started thinking about, okay, so I caught Mm. my first case. I was 14. Now, quite, you know, quite naturally, he's not doing the things that I was doing, Mm -hmm. but the climate is much different now. Mm -hmm. So my my heightened awareness began to increase. At the time when my sons and daughters, like Neat Neat, she's 23 now, but like when she first started driving, I was like, damn, man, what's going to happen if she get pulled over? Mm, right. You know what I mean? And and, yeah. and then her mom got a pistol when she turned 21 or something like that, and she happened to have left the pistol in her bag and checked it into the airport, mm. and that caused for me to have to go get out of jail. But <laughs> the point but is... She got it. Point is, when things like that started happening, I yeah. st- I began to understand. Mm. You got all this influence, all this notoriety, all this. What you this, gonna do? Yeah, you mm-hmm. like, come on, man. What mm-hmm. are you really doing? Are you just gonna earn things to benefit you personally? Mm-hmm. Right. Because nobody that I can recall in history uh, were ever remembered or acknowledged for the things they had. That's right. Mm-hmm. I don't remember nobody. I mean, well, Mansa well, Musa, Mansa Musa. Mm-hmm. They they did speak of all of the richest, the richest man ever mm-hmm. in the world, so mm-hmm. on and so forth. Uh, but nobody remembers the car Martin Luther King drove. Right. No. Mm-hmm. Nobody remembers the watch Malcolm X had. Right. Mm-hmm. Nobody remembers, you know, the 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 designer. Uh, of suits, suits. that mm-hmm. Marcus Garvey wore. Right. Like, mm-hmm. nobody remember none of that shit. Mm-hmm. That's People right. remember you for what you invest of yourself to get things done for others. That's mm-hmm. right. And that's it. Yeah. And well, that's we why we remember started. Michael Jackson for his glove and his jacket and all kinds of and stuff. And bubbles. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean... Well, that's why we started Educate Our Men, Mm because we started the the initiative for young men, hip-hop sisters and sisters, Mm -hmm. and we actually went to start an initiative for young women. But then we had Mike Brown, Ferguson, you had all these young black men being murdered, and so we immediately like, zip, okay, Mm. we're going to start to pour into black men, period. Mm -hmm. Like... So, you know, our sister Tamika Mallory, she going to march. Now, mm-hmm. Tamika, that's my that's our sister. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tamika yeah. is a... She, that's we, my we, girl. We, yeah. yeah. We, so we she's going to march. Mm-hmm. You're going to do this. And we decided Absolutely. we're going to take money and literally put them in school. Mm-hmm. We're going to put them in school. Yeah. We're going to nurture them. I remember Devin just graduated. Uh, Joshua was valedictorian. But Devin almost flunked out freshman year. Mm. So he got a call from Lynn Richardson. Mm. <laughs> See, I don't believe in timeout. I believe, how about I take time out to whoop you? Maybe by the time I got off the phone and he graduated. So it's that kind of hands mm-hmm. on. They but text like. Yeah. Because it, yeah. it, takes, it takes some, some like a heightened level of caring mm-hmm. to take time out of your day, mm-hmm. which, which is filled with many, many daunting tasks. Yes. And invest that time into yeah. someone mm-hmm. that needs the energy you have on the other end of that phone. Yeah. Like it ain't most people just don't 
care enough to say anything. He, she knew also that he was worth that. He, he, yeah. he was I mean, a sponge. You know, he was He's a sponge. Like my he brother. was, yeah, right. uh, or, you know. He he just was in a bad moment, but I tell you what, since then he's graduated. I just spoke to him uh, for Thanksgiving, and he said Amazing. he hosted his family at Amazing. his apartment. He cut the turkey. He, he was he extremely to happy. He donates okay. to the organization yep. that put him through school, yep. right. and he works for the Navy. He's coding for the Navy. That's yeah. right. So they fly him all over the world. And then John, he called one day, uh, Wednesday before Thanksgiving. He had final exam. He didn't have a computer. So they like, Dr. Lynn, he need a computer. I said, God damn. Like he needs a computer. <laughs> so we went, got him a computer, shipped it to him, made sure he got it. You know, so that's that's, that's what we that's, did for that's, that. That's mm-hmm. very important work. Yeah, and, you for, know, the, for black men. I, I tell really, you, no, it's very important work for people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not just black men, not just black women, not just black people. Yeah, it's for, for people. humanity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's very important work that yeah. you're doing. Mm-hmm. So Thank you. I think it should be uh, acknowledged. And celebrate it. Well, we can always name a scholarship under the name of T.I. <laughs> man, sure please. Mm-hmm. I mean, man, I, I've i given a lot more money to a lot less worthy things. Mm-hmm. I ain't really tripping off of that. Mm-hmm. I don't even have to have it be my name it after her. Okay. I don't even, you know, I I got a GED. Mm-hmm. I didn't I didn't go to college. So, you yeah, know. Yeah, you can't tell. You went to a whole you, nother you, type you of You went to a whole nother <laughs> level of wisdom. You All know, y'all. A like, lot of people say to me. Real. Yo, you didn't even finish high school. How did you get so smart? How did you learn all these Reading words? Reading is you... fundamental, and that's the that's the common answer. However, uh-huh. I would more over to say, I have never learned enough from reading in a book to pale in comparison what I've learned in from life. conversation and experience. Absolutely. Like mm-hmm. most of the words I know, I, I, I learned from conversation. When somebody says, hey, what does that mean? Mm-hmm. Yep. And, and I immediately, like, oh, I'm going to use that. You have empirical knowledge. Mm-hmm. Empirical, empirical knowledge. Empirical knowledge. Based on, concerned with, or verifiable by observation or experience rather than theory or pure logic. Now, yeah. see, that is the word of the week. So yeah. we have a tradition here at Expeditiously, okay. and the tradition is mm-hmm. the word of the week. And you just provided us with the word of the week. Yeah. Empirical. And so Empirical. the academic education is not an education at all. Mm. It's a farming into, I don't know what it is. And Man, it <laughs> kills the confidence of black people. Thank you. That's it's what not, the school system is set up to it's do. It's not right. It kills the confidence of black people when uh, uh, well, I read it earlier in the autobiography of Malcolm X, but then we just mm-hmm. watched Who Killed Malcolm X, mm-hmm. and uh, it, it reminded me, okay, so Malcolm was a smart kid, on a roll student, and he got to a place where they asked every kid uh, like they did you, like they did me, like they did all of us. What do you want to be when you grow up? Mm-hmm. And Malcolm thought he would be a great lawyer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the white teacher said, a lawyer, no, that's not a good Negro job. No, nobody's going to hire See. a Negro lawyer. You know what? How about a good carpenter? Mm. Why don't you just build things with your hands? Like, you know, you could be a good carpenter. That's a good job for you. And immediately after that, he went, to a life of crime. There you go. So that begs me to ask the question, how can we continue to allow our oppressor to educate mm. our children? You preaching now. Because Ooh. no none of the You preaching now. None of the, it's not education. None of the other I don't want to be racist uh groups of people uh, not racist, excuse me. Mm-hmm. Uh no other group no ethnic other group, group no other ethnic group mm-hmm. would depend on their oppressor to educate them. The you look at the Jewish community, you can't go into a Jewish community and go into a school where Jewish kids are 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 being educated and find other people. <laughs> no, no, but find no find Hitler being celebrated. Right. You're right. Mm-hmm. You see You're what I'm saying? Right. However, when we send our children to school, they teach us about General E. Lee or uh, Robert F. Lee, whatever his mm-hmm. name is, mm-hmm. and General Sherman mm-hmm. and 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 Ulysses S. Grant, mm-hmm. and you know, and, and we are the only country that celebrates 
losers in war. Mm-hmm. Come on now. The Confederate Army lost the damn war. war. Uh-huh. If you won, you'd have had it your way. Right. You can't lose and still have it your way. Right. You lost the war. Mm-hmm. Why are we still putting up monuments for losers? Mm-hmm. Right. Why are we still defending? They won't go down. They won't go down without a fight. They're, yeah, we go down, we, we pull them to. down. Mm-hmm. But what I'm saying is, but it ain't even that important. Okay, it's a, it's a structure, it's standing top, whatever, whatever. Right. But if you don't look at it, it has no power. Mm-hmm. You dig what I'm saying? Right. Uh, but but my honest, I don't know how far we could progress under we, this same system, the same practice. Like, mm-hmm. why are we still looking to them to educate us? Well, well uh, unfortunately, the things- there's a lot, but I also think there are a lot of people who are taking it into their own hands, and there's a whole lot more homeschooling that is happening across the nation. That I-, I don't want to do that either. Yeah. That's See, that's the thing me and my wife go back and forth about. She would like for King to be homeschooled. I definitely would. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could understand why. Nah. King is and- a very King is a very social sociable person. Mm-hmm. You know, he has so he has that he part. Has all the elements that got it. You know what I'm saying? He needs as so <clears throat> all he needs is the learning. How old you know, is he? He's fifteen. fifteen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Stru- structure and discipline. He need he well he needs discipline and structure. No, but I'm talking about self discipline, not, not not like the discipline that comes from a parent. You know what I mean? I'm talking about I got this paper due. And I know it's my responsibility. Mm, to get I it need done. to make sure that this is. But you know, in homeschool, you know they have certain things that you have to have done. Yeah. To me, homeschool, you get what you can pay for. No. Oh listen, no, listen. no no no, that's no, not true. That's no, that's, okay. that's not. I mean, I, I mean, I, right. from my experience, that's 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 what I have mm. ascertained. Right. No. And, but please correct me if I'm. If no, I'm I know quite a few uh, families out here where their children are homeschooled, and it's done on the up and up. There's mm. no, you know, there's no paying for the degree. Okay. Now let yeah. me. No, we're not paying for the degree. Mm-hmm. But if you need a little more time, and it's taking you a little too long, and then this homeschool teacher is ready to, you know, like eventually. They're going to give you enough context clues to where you don't really know the answer, but it led you to the right answer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You don't really find the answer for yourself right. the same way well, as if you're in a struggling classroom full of 30 kids. Right. And, and you know <laughs> what? What I will say to that is I'm not there. I'm not present. So I don't know, you know, the system. Well, we're not of how asking it goes. you to defend the concept right. of, of homeschool. Well, I think mm-hmm. the whole system is whack. I know all across the America. Good teachers are being pushed out, and these new people are coming in. That's also and- true. How can you expect for teachers to perform at the level they're expected to perform at to shape and mold the minds of the future, mm-hmm. and they make less That's than what I'm correction about. Mm-hmm. officers? There you go. So you're telling me it's yep. more important to pay someone to, to watch, watch over prisoner. mm-hmm. prisoners yep. than it is to pay someone to, to keep kids kids. from becoming prisoners. Mm-hmm. Right. That doesn't make a lot of sense yep. to yeah. me. And today, schools are uh, far more dangerous than yes. they are with your child being at home, getting their learning. Like, you, you may send your child to school and they not come back. Mm. Yeah, You can send your child to the movies, to the restaurant, but, to your, I mean, to But what I'm saying is, you know, with, you, with all these shootings and all the things going on, and, you know, King, he has a, his other problems, too. I just feel like he would be, you know, safer. King, this is the thing. And more, this is the thing. Um... Just better off at homeschool. Okay, mm-hmm. and this is this is what I tell my wife. Uh, you know, I try to share this with her, with um, candor, and um, and 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 humility. But I, mu- I, I also want to make sure that she knows. King has it within him to overcome every adversity life can place before him. All he needs is for us not to rescue him from the adversity. No, but listen, I, I hear what you're saying, but King also gets, you know, he's he's a very nice, sweet, loving kid, but somehow he can find himself in places in, in predicaments that he do He'll not need to be in, and he it's can, not can, his, no, and it's not his fault, like, but I don't. I don't feel like All he should be a children. child to be picked on. It's no. Listen, it's sweetheart, different though. Because this is what I'm trying to tell you. Knowing from from being a from being a man, 
or, or and starting as a young man, I know from 13 to 21, those are years where you're coming into a alpha position and a lot of you you're around other guys who are also coming into an alpha position so there is a a figurative battle or conquest between who is actually you know the most alpha of them all and of course it's all ego and it means nothing when you actually graduate and get to the real world but at that stage in their life, that is an actual it's a it's a rite of passage. Yeah. You I can't agree. take that away from him. I I mean I don't think it's taking it away from him. He's already been through it. Some of no, it and he, he, can, he gotta he gotta go through it till he go through it. No, he don't. Not he got every, to. all kids on all the rest of our kids didn't really go through See, it. See, that's like what that. I'm saying, because that wasn't their journey. This but was for him. This saying, is his journey for him. He's a different, he's a different kind of kid. Like yeah. he to me, you know what I'm saying? King is the most I, rambunctious of all of our children. I understand that. Yeah, um, so mm-hmm. I feel like he is not, you know, he can't take all the pressures of, you know, people. That all ain't the, true. That's hard. That's you not know, true it, that he no, can't take I mean, the pressure. No, I mean, he can, but he This is he what she acts, mean to say. He ain't going to stand for no disrespect. He not going to let nobody say nothing he don't like, do nothing he don't like to him, violate him in any way, and there going to be consequences behind that. Now, I know, it's, but but I but, got a daughter. But like all that. of that, but but all of that is necessary to establish your place in society as a young black man. All of that stuff is necessary. He really just sharpening his sword for when he get out there into the real world to have to deal with real adversities. These right. are just tests. Yes, which he can pass. Yes. He just needs you to not take him out the classroom yes. because, yeah, you know, yeah. he wasn't prepared for the test. I understand, or because you don't though, because as a mother, it's like, that right there, I don't think I want them to experience that. It's the physical the, fights that she don't like. Yeah, you know it's what like. But it's going to be yeah. some But see, the thing is, for him, he, he got into a, a fight. It went, it's all over the internet. So, you know, whoever he's fighting, he got a lot of play on this, on mm-hmm. this fight. Mm-hmm. So now I feel like, now every day I come around, they call him and King got into it. He about to fight again, this, this, and that. So it's like, mm-hmm. people are like, oh, yeah. That's all right. Target King. Yeah, they yeah. Target. guess what? That's cool. Man, it's not guess, cool. Now, guess what? All of that happens until the moment where something happens to show everybody King ain't the one to target. Mm. Yeah. So now and he I to... happen to trust in that moment. Yeah. You know what I mean? I know he got that moment in him. I know him and the resources around him, what we have taught him, what we've instilled in him, what 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 we've what we've uh allowed him access to. Mm-hmm. And 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 the the fabric of of material he was born around. Man, that man, he I he insulated. Whether that whether the people who approaching him know it or not. But if you ain't, you know, financially stable enough to uproot the lives of you, your mama, your grandmama, your brothers, your sisters, your whole family, I suggest you let that shit alone. Because this shit is a generational curse. Yeah. It would be generational warfare behind that. Mm. Like the Capulets and Montagues. So therefore, <laughs> and see the thing is, Capulets and Montagues were both wealthy. Mm-hmm. So if you have one wealthy family and another that, you know, is still finding their way, it is irresponsible to move forward in haste and in, in, in lack of necessity just out of an ego purpose, yeah. just to try and, like you said, get popular. Mm. That is an irresponsible. And as young men, because most young men, their first responsibility is their mother. You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? So now you put your mom in a position where you got, man, come on, bro. Yeah, but you uh, most, 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 most young teenagers ain't really thinking on that level, what you think, like, oh, if I do this, my mom and all this, they don't think like that. I did. Irrational. I tell you what, D. Nice didn't think it. 
Because you remember when D-Nice got into that thing with those guys up in the projects over that girl and uh-huh. he went and called Scott LaRock and Scott LaRock came to his rescue and wind up dying oh, because see. of it. Damn. He didn't think anything was going to happen to him like that. Damn. He just was thinking about his safety. Right. Yeah, you know. And Scott yeah. LaRock was probably the most certified, the most, you know, yeah. thorough motherfucker that he knew. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, we all had that go-to person. You know, that motherfucker we going to call when, right. hey man, shit getting thick. You right. should pull up. We you were know what talking I mean? about, you know, their son, King, yeah. and I kind of liken it to my oldest daughter, Sydney, went through a lot of stuff. And I was just like you. It's like I want to pull her back. But the truth is, that thing that's in her got to play out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I finally came to the acceptance that it's probably best for it to play out while she's younger mm. and I'm still somewhat of an influence than to try to protect her from it. And then when she's out there for real and I don't have no, absolutely, it's hard. Lower but you know, very hard. I, I feel Look. like with girls and guys, you know, at their age, it's is just it different? So different. Cause it's different, it different because you're worrying about okay. different it is things. A different. Different, you know what I'm it's saying? Different. For a guy, you worry about them going out getting killed, shot, or mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Something of that nature. Man. Versus, you know, girls. He got it in him. He, he, he gonna be fine. These girls, if too. If I could make it, Now he can sex make it. trafficking. I'm That's like, what I'm so it's oh, my man. daughters like are in college. I'm like, are you nature. gonna be walking down the street and just get snatched in a car? Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's crazy. Yeah. It's different things that you have to worry about. It is. Man, no, but look, you don't worry about it. Like, you, 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 you trust in God. Would you, you come on saying? now? You That's trust it. in God, you know. And yeah. and I don't believe that God would put. He's never put me in a place that I could not conceivably exit. Safely. Wow! Mm-hmm. I've never been. I mean, even when I thought I wasn't safe, mm. I was safe. I didn't know I was safe. You mm. couldn't exit jail when you was in there. Eventually, the time came. Yeah, but you Eventually, can't do it when you wanted to. But it ain't about when I want to. It's about when it's time to. Yeah, after you served it. That's right. So that's fine because it's because the sentence could have been a lot longer. Right. So 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 it's about me. But, but, that's but, so funny. I remember hearing about you. Okay. Because we had uh, we had a hit song. You know. That's what on. I was about to say. Keep Didn't on, you guys work together? On. Yeah. 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 We sure did. And I remember her talking about. Her guy. Well, actually, I don't know if you were uh-huh. talking to me about him or someone else. It was like, oh, yeah, you know, Tiny's boyfriend, you know, he's a rapper. And I was like, oh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Talking about me back then, were you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, man, listen, I had the very fortunate outcome of being able to manifest my dreams into reality by showing her how much of a hell of a guy she had on her. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, I knew he was wrapping up. <laughs> it was, that hey. is hilarious. But listen, guys, I want each of you to tell me, like, what? so what could I do? Like, what am I, what do people think they know about me but not really know, and how could I make myself better in this new, like, wave of, existence you know what's so crazy i think you're already doing it yeah. right what you're in the midst with? of it you're you're showing us who you are you know many times specifically in entertainment with athletes with rappers and this it's this whole mystery they hide that behind exists. the persona mm-hmm. right and you know some of them are hiding on purpose and right. some of them just think that's the game that must be played in order mm-hmm. to have people it's lucrative s- yeah mm-hmm. I will people say want to know more it's so it's always lucrative. this desiring more information or more presence from right. you However, you are making yourself be seen. I thought it was extremely entertaining with you on Hip Hop Squares. Man, we worked at Hip Hop Squares, and you were the you were the the, the, the DJ, yeah. the commemorative DJ for the season, mm-hmm. and we had the best time. Yeah, man. it was a great time, and I, I had never seen you like that. Right. So it was it was great to see you in your element and just feeling good and being who you are. 
Man, likewise. And so mm-hmm. I think, you know, you're on your way to doing what it is that you just said, um, letting people know who you are and your, right. your how, what your character is. But see, that's the thing, though, because most people can't really wrap their minds around all mm-hmm. the many different facets of what makes me who I am. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, like, you know, she always, you know, says, well, you didn't do that this time. Well, that was different. Right, and she mm-hmm. doesn't ever want to hear it. Mm-mm. Um, Mm-mm. Uh, but uh, but uh, you know, it, at the beginning of this show, mm-hmm. you know, the 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 tag is, it, it comes from an interview I did at the Breakfast Club. Mm-hmm. But basically, it, it, it is me, kind of articulating the different nuances of me. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I I am, the founder of trap music. Mm-hmm. I am a former drug dealer. I am an ex-con. I am also a lover of my people. I am also a family man. Mm -hmm. I am also an entrepreneur. I'm also a self-made millionaire. Mm -hmm. I'm also Mm -hmm. someone who will give you the shirt off my back. I'm Mm -hmm. also someone who will shoot you down if you violate my family or the women Mm -hmm. that I am sworn to protect. Mm -hmm. I'm also, you know, like it's so many different Mm -hmm. nuances of Mm me, you know what I'm saying, that... People are like, well, we don't know which one of them real. All of them are real. All of them are real. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All of them are real. It's mm-hmm. called diversity. I don't have to mm-hmm. only be one thing mm-hmm. all the time. Mm-hmm. And I think societies. Mm. I was just thinking. I think societies, their expectation for one to be one thing, thing. and one yeah. thing right. only. Yeah. It's kind of like, shut up and dribble. LeBron. Right. Like, Don't shoot. Nah, yeah. bro. Right. Like, come on, man. You can't just tell me just because this is what you know me for, that this is all That's that all I exist do. for. Yeah. You can't do that. Well, and mm-hmm. the thing is, too, is many men get trapped into believing they can only be mm-hmm. one thing. Mm-hmm. So the only time they really get to express themselves, if even that, is in a one-on-one relationship with their wives right. or their girlfriends or or, or maybe with their the guys that they hang out with, but a lot of them um, only let one dimension of themselves show. Mm-hmm. So I commend you for, you know, coming to the table, every table that you sit at, and you bring all of who you are, and those are the moments that involve you being vulnerable to not knowing something. Mm. Most people want to believe that they know it all. I'm a problem he's one solver. Of those yeah, I want to know it all. I want to know it all. I think no, I think life is a constant. Wanting to know it all constant. versus yeah, thinking you, you know, know it all. It all. Oh, no, God. I don't believe I know it all. No, the, the, listen. The greatest thing anyone can ever know is that they know they nothing, nothing at all. Yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because if you think you know it all, you can't <laughs> find the solution to mm-hmm. it all. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. So I, I don't know it all. Now I always say, listen, I'm not sure about this. You don't always say that. <laughs> <laughs> I can I say you spark two. dialogue <laughs> in my home because I have three daughters. Oh. Uh, they, uh, Hyman to, Gate. Yeah, see, oh. oh, my. <laughs> and then <laughs> their youngest one, she, she came home. <laughs> I, said, I love the energy that uh, it yeah. created, though. Right. Oh, at, let me tell I you. I love the energy. A lot of young women found their voices and say, oh, I'm speaking out against this. I didn't know what I was meant to speak out against yeah. before, but well, now I know. This is the moment. I'm speaking out against this. But now, once I broke well, it down and I told my daughters, I said, listen, first of all, one of the worst things a young lady can do is get into a sexual relationship with a little boy. Mm-hmm. It usually ruins their lives. That's their real. Their whole lives. That's real. And I started going down the list of my mother and his, mm. and my, like all of these women. I said, it started because they chose to have sex with the wrong person at the age of 14, 15, 16. Mm. When emotionally, so we, it You're ended incapable. up being. And so it, is he. It, there you go. There you go. My grandmother raised me my because my father was beating my mother. Oh. He was beating her like an animal in the street. Damn. Like an animal in the street. And I saw that. And it took me becoming an adult to realize, you know, first I go through this whole life like nobody's going to fight me. Like I'm, I, the switch will flip and it's like, okay, that's not the same Lynn Richardson. But it took me all of my adult life to understand that he did the best that he could with what he had. That's all he knew how to do. Mm. And that's all my mother knew how to do was take it. Mm. And I forgive them both. 
Mm-hmm. Like, damn. He was 18, she was 19. What else do 18 and 19 year olds, they're really not smart people. So, <laughs> think about True. it. 18 and 19 year old people. Yeah. So imagine 15, lo- 16, yeah. you don't really know you anything. Have no idea. Right. So it was me, it was that, you having that. The juxtaposition of them not knowing anything is at the present moment where we recognize they know nothing. At that moment for them in their life, Smartest they've ever they been. Right. <laughs> right. They can't even fathom. Right. I don't know. What you right. mean? Right. You should have seen me yesterday. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> you know, years later with I was throwing a birthday party for my father and he basically kind of didn't want me to throw a party for him because he didn't feel worthy. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, Dad, you you gave me life. Like mm-hmm. Everything about me comes from my father, my mm-hmm. entrepreneurialism, my mathematical mind. Mm-hmm. So I can't be mad at him because of who he was at the age of 18 because of whatever he saw. He saw his father beat his So I can't be mad at that. Right. But my point with my daughters was we're trying to protect you from being in something that could harm you for the rest of your life. And, Catastrophically. And even, Catastrophically. And even more, even more importantly, it's not our job to appease you right now in Ooh, this moment. That's the mm. truth. It's our job to look forward five steps, five yep. months, five years ahead into yep. the future and protect you then. There you go. From yourself today. Would you? Mm. Come on. Mm-hmm. You know what that's I'm saying? it. That's what, that's what the that's, conversation that's was. That's what a parent does. Right. Yep. You don't know. You don't. You're too stupid to know. So it's fine. It's fine. Right. Not stupid. You're too ignorant. You're too ignorant right. to know. You just don't you know. Just Stu- don't know. Stupid is knowing you don't know and not looking for the answers. Ignorant is just the you, act of not knowing. Not knowing. Right. Yeah. Just void of the information. Void of yeah. the information. Mm-hmm. So my so so understanding that you're void of the information, what I what we have a task to do is bypass your understanding. Mm-hmm. Implement <laughs> yeah. protocol, procedures, and structure that will guide you into the place where you now have your prison understanding. Yeah. Mm. Okay, but before you get to your prison understanding, you can't expect to be, you know, gallivanting around the world just calling shots for yourself. Because, <laughs> that, you know what I mean? It's right. catastrophic. And sh- so, like, light doesn't understand because my kids will still ask me, Mommy, I want to get a tattoo. And I'm like, She's like, I can't get Why she can't get why they can't get a tattoo? They get them. They just ask me first. But I'm saying what, they're off in school. They're, they're like in how oh. her two youngest are Howard like University. But, look, but if, she, but if they them. were 15, 16, why they couldn't get a tattoo without you? First of all, my husband's whole body is tattooed. So uh, oh, these are her kids. Oh, <laughs> but these are her his kids. Whole, with, his whole her body kids is tattooed. Got a rough neck, yeah, huh? Yeah. For sure. For sure. A reformed rough neck. So he got our names, all this stuff. So it's like, and I'm just like, you getting a tattoo, it hurt. You know, I'm just all squeamish. And then one day I lied to everybody and told them I was going with them to get tattoos and everybody got she up. She didn't show up. I didn't up. show up. <laughs> and everybody wow. else got one. But, but guess but what I, though? It was just a, she and I are the exact opposite. She uh-huh. has a body full of tattoos. Uh-huh. I have not a one. I don't have not one. I ain't That's got like mm-hmm. So I ain't got the reason why they ask, it's just respect. Yeah. You know, it's just respect. It's just, well, this is my respect. question, right? Mm-hmm. Because uh, in, during the time of Hymen Gate, uh, oh, there was so that much. Was like Watergate, Hymen there Gate. was so much conversation <laughs> and discussion over, like, what was acceptable for a parent to do to kind of guide or direct a child and what was going overboard and being considered controlling. Mm -hmm. Now, first point I'm ever going to make in in regards to this discussion, you cannot guide, direct, or instruct anything without a certain level of control. Mm -hmm. Period. You have to have... It's only considered, in my opinion, it's only considered controlling Mm -hmm. if... You are operating within your authority with motives and intentions to control just for the sake of control. Well, if that's the, manipulation. Absolutely. Right? Okay. If the things you're doing, if the things that you're doing are from a place of concern mm. and caring, I don't think that's control. That's parenting at that point. And so... 
I'm not in opposition of that. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Now, <laughs> but, but but the thing is, right, I think it's just because it was a father saying it. I agree. And a black father I at agree. that. I agree 100%. I think it was just because it was, I'm a black father and I said I agree. Well, I think... The actor, the, what? the old guy that was talking Who? about his daughter... Who? That that went away in a moment's time. Alec Baldwin. Ah, uh, what did he say about his daughter? I didn't even know about this. Let's 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 share. Let's well, share. He called her a bitch. Oh well, nah. See, that's he any, called, that's, like he went that, off. That her apple, but I'm saying this got more attention. That's apples and than coconuts, that. right? Yeah, there. that's ridiculous. Right, yeah, I like, mean that's that, that's not that's the great. I mean, it, it's just yeah, a that's whole lot. I never called my daughter out there. I yeah, never even man, consider. You know, yeah. you were on the He's front line for that yeah. for a much longer time than he even had to deal with. But I, I, I feel, I feel fine in the fire. I don't, I don't mind well, being in the well, fire. What about your, little, your points to you know how a, a mother is able to yes, tell their daughter that was you thank can't you. Touch your head. Okay, go ahead. Thank you so yeah. very much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, a fourteen-year-old child. Should be able Mm-mm. to. I could tell you right now. <laughs> the answer is no. This is what I told. Okay, I don't care what minute. you want to call Okay, it. wait a minute. Hold on. <laughs> I'm going to call it control. We got, hey, it's listen, a dictatorship. We got a black mama in the house to, tonight. I you dig what I'm saying? She said black mama. We got a black mama in the house. It's a dictatorship. Hey, check this out. And nah. I told my children, listen, when you, you can make your own decisions, when you can uh, take care of yourself and me. Mm. <laughs> Not just you. Not that's just easy. you. That's easy. Like I'm doing for you. Damn. When you can take care of you and me, the then I won't question. Have just risen. I won't question <laughs> nothing you saying. But until you can do that, I am in charge. It's a dictatorship. Well, mom, it's my head. No, that's my head. <laughs> <laughs> that's my head. Then my feet. Uh, that's why you got to ask me if you can put a tattoo on my leg, my feet, until you... Hey, listen, So that's man. just how I look at it. Man. But I, I, I mean, I, I don't necessarily... <laughs> I don't have, I don't think, the authorization or, or the luxury of agreeing to the point that you agree to. <laughs> yeah, I'm a mama. But, but Some stuff ain't it. fair. See, and that's the thing. Some stuff ain't fair. See, if I was a mama and I said what I said, nobody yeah. would say nothing. Some stuff is not fair. And I tell people, everybody want to make everything so equal, so this, so that. No, some stuff is not equal. Some things need to be what they are. The chivalry is not dead. Men do yeah. need to open doors for women. Like Absolutely. it's some stuff. And, and women, we are supposed to submit to you, our husbands ooh, if they submit that, to Christ. If we sub, if they submit to Christ. Now wait a minute. They, yeah, wait yeah, a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. That's what I say. Listen. To the Bible, follow I, God. Jesus Christ is the greatest human being ever walked the earth yeah. in my opinion opinion now with that being said he 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 preaches from truths of the bible okay um the bible said god is a a jealous god right Bible got a lot of comments. Ah, wait a minute. Now. <laughs> got a lot of comments. Bible say God is just God. Also says do not pray to false idols. Does it not? That's right. Okay, so if God, if we have no photograph, we'll have no kind of identification. We have no way of describing him. So anything we can put a photograph to and we kind of associate it with God, that's a false idol. Okay. Even if this Bible says that this is God's son. God didn't say no false idols except for my son. Mm-hmm. God did not say uh, 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 I'm a jealous God unless you're dealing with my son. Mm-hmm. So if we're going by the Bible. Which also says that in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God and Jesus is the word. And whoa, the word whoa, the whoa, 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 whoa. I heard Just everything now. but the last part. Uh-huh. And Jesus is Jesus. the word. What is that part? Where is that? It's in John. Is that in scripture? Oh, absolutely. And Jesus is yeah. the word. Now, is that one of those things that they just implemented in there <laughs> after <laughs> the fact? Because <laughs> I asked every minister this, uh-huh. and they they, they, they scratched their heads at Temple Temple. Uh, first question. Temple is, Temple. Is God's word not everlasting? His word is everlasting. His word is everlasting. Uh-huh. The everlasting word of God. But let me ask this. I'm, no, 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 wait. No, I'm no, not, real no, quick, but, 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 I'm, I'm finishing. Well, when should a man 
have dominion over his wife. If it's not, I am not. I ain't touching that one. Oh, okay, I'm talking it. about. All right, but the, that's how we got G- here. Because but, but no, here. but but no. What I'm saying is because you said a woman should submit to her husband if. He has submitted to Jesus. Mm. However, what if he that's submitted he to God? Well, come on that's and bypass that's, Jesus. That's fine. That's fine. Jesus, Submit what's going on? I'm gonna slap your hands on the way to the office to see, see the big man. Th- that come you, on, you, you dig what I'm saying? Like that's I'll I, go I don't. You on that. I mean, well, I, there are many people of many different religions that don't see Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, but yet they submit to to their God. I submit to the miraculous actions and duties and deeds of Jesus Christ. Mm. I know what he represented Mm -hmm. to the time. He represented change. Yeah. When there was a, a a holistic view of what religion and lifestyle mm-hmm. and society should be, God came in. Oh, excuse me. Jesus came you in. Was right, but go ahead. Well, mm-hmm. God came in and implemented Jesus mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, to reconstruct the narrative and because it was hypocritical. To yes, be honest with absolutely. you, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? You want to stone these people for That's their right. sins yeah. and have everybody forget mm-hmm. about yours. Would you come on with it? And that to You're me, still doing that today. Absolutely. So I think I believe in that part of what he yeah. represented, representing the fact of I can be the 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 voice that represents the truth spoken to power. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No matter how powerful. The, the the magnitudes may be, I am, you know, strong enough, confident enough, aware enough, present enough yeah. within my existence to exude the strength necessary to get us to the next phase in life. I think, you know, I think Malcolm X was there. I think Martin Luther King was yeah. there. I think Nelson Mandela was there. I think I think it's a lot of people that Tupac, I think Tupac was there. Yeah. It's a lot of people throughout history that was like that's their purpose. Yeah. I think that's my purpose. I, I think agree. I am here to I don't know whether I don't know if I haven't touched on it yet. You know what I mean? But you I know think what? I'm here I'm to just, I'm I have to say this. You have such a purpose. Yeah, you do. That is the only reason you are still walking this earth. That's the truth for a thousand. Yeah. Because <laughs> think about what it, what would Tupac be now Ooh. at this age? Had he moved through the ranks, gotten over the hurdles and valleys and all of mm. the opposition that was against him, and you have gotten over and through all of that, and here you stand and you're living in your purpose right now. Mm. Mm-hmm. I mean, thank you. Thank you so much. But the question was, is God's word not everlasting? (laughs) His word is everlasting. His word is everlasting. God's everlasting word. That's what Christians, they base their foundational beliefs and their belief structure on this. God's word being everlasting. Now. Just don't call me a Christian if you compare me to other Christians. No, no. Well, well, wait a minute. Wait a damn minute now. I don't want to be. Don't call me a Christian if I'm being compared to other other Christians. Christians. Yeah, because I'm not that. Yeah, see, but look, though, that yeah. mean, like, you know, black people hate everything about slavery except Christianity. Well, it depends on what you think Christianity is. So for me, Christianity isn't what Christians have made it to be. I'm talking it's about the not. Western belief of okay. Christianity. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's because that's our society's structure that's our that's our fundamentals well just because slave masters use christianity Absolutely. doesn't mean they that's what i'm go. that's the point yeah. if yeah. god word is everlasting how can you change the word of god that's everlasting yeah. to suit your personal there you go. benefit yeah they weren't how can you do that well, the, and the expect me to that. take this shit seriously yeah the devil does that the devil uses the word Oh, the enemy uses the word. I tell now, people all the time, now. just because you quote the scripture don't mean anything. The enemy uses the word all day long. Absolutely. However, what I'm trying to say is, ain't God people pulled to stand up and defend the word of God against the devil's use of the word? I think so. Okay. So, let me just say, uh, the first time this was brought to my attention was when we got married. 
And I was expecting, you know, I was like, you know, going through the vows and whatever, and you know, to have whole for better or for worse sentence in hell, to honor and obey. And they say, whoa, we don't say obey no more. Mm. Huh? Mm-hmm. What do you mean you don't say obey no more? And I wasn't tripping off. I want her to obey me because how I saw it was. If I if she got to obey me, I got to obey her. So I didn't see it as any kind of way that would, you know, put me in a more authoritative position than it would her. But the fact that it was read from a Bible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I was being told that out of this Bible, these words had changed. The everlasting word of God never changes. No, it doesn't. So yeah. therefore, how can I take this shit seriously? Well, a lot of the words are changing. Well, mm-hmm. I've got so many different yeah. versions. It's well, like... I know for because I had to, it, you know, I had a, to preach a sermon, and when I read the Bible ten, eleven years ago, the words that were there are no longer there today. I am literally talking about the exact same version because it was certain scriptures that I, you know, had an affinity for, and they don't say the same thing. So things where there were he and she, it says person. Uh you can't do that. See, you cannot you change do. the word of Which God. Which version is that? It's in the. It's King all James. over the New International Version. Mm. That where where it was he and she, it is person. You can't do that. It is, and mm. I'm ta- I'm like you are contradicting yeah. the concept of yeah. the everlasting Maybe word it's of the God. Mandela effect. <laughs> no. Nope. Yeah. It most certainly is not. I'm just it's, saying. All I'm saying is I can't really wrap my mind around it because, mm. like, it's kind of like. If you if if you challenge this, you got to challenge everything else. Absolutely. Did Moses really sp- like split the Red Sea? Mm. You know what I mean. Did Noah really build an ark and sail in a flood? Mm. Did any of this shit that we say happen? Is all of it just philosophical interpretations of the times of then and now? Mm-hmm. Because there's a lot of things like I I will admit, even with all of my how can I say all of my questions, concerns and critiques of the Bible and Christianity's use of the Bible. One thing about me that I cannot, I can't lie to myself. Mm -hmm. And I know that God is real. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now that right. God is real. Is Religion is bullshit. Absolutely. God is real. Religion is here to control people. Absolutely. Religion is here to control the thoughts, intentions, minds. Of the masses. uh, Exactly. I I agree that Jesus did not come to create Christianity. Right. And that's why I said, remember we had this conversation? I think Jesus could have just been a hell of a nigga on his own. And then he was (laughs) just such a hell of a nigga of his time. They were like, you know what? We going to goddamn, we going to put some. We gonna put some thought into this nigga. We, we gonna, had a conversation he needs to be the early example. on when we started working together, and it was about Christianity and your thoughts about it. And I said, "Well, if Christianity is what people do, then I'm not one either. What? Let's come up with a new name." See the thing but, is, but I, you know, I I do believe in Jesus Christ, and He is the head of my life. So as it relates to that, but in terms of people and the rules and I don't the think this none of that matters. I don't think none of that matters. I don't think none of that I can't. It's None of it matters. None of it matters. None of it matters. I agree. If you believe in Buddha rather than Jesus, rather than Allah, rather than Jehovah, I don't think nobody's keeping score. Like, and that's another lie that Christianity, if you don't accept the blood of Jesus and rose on the third day, come on, bro. That's too many details. Too many details. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Yes or no? Yes. I think that's it. You know what I mean? That's it. Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ. Yes, I believe he sacrificed for my benefit. And that's it. Same thing as Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, right. anybody I mean, else. Well, well, this is how I, I live my life. First of all, I don't have a heaven or hell to put nobody in. Okay, now. That, it's like and I don't have the capacity or the desire to argue about it. <laughs> I choose to believe that um, certain things about marriage or life or whatever, and uh-huh. it's what I believe, and that's it. For that's me. right. That's and right. And what you do for you, who you believe, who you sleep with, Man, how you, you do know it. What? Like, I still love you. Like, I don't, I don't have a. 
I don't have a barometer that says, well, you're wrong. Or you're, mm, I, I just that I makes can't sense. bring myself now, to that it. That brings me to the Dwayne Wade discussion. Oh, Lord. Okay. It's time to go. <laughs> <laughs> this is the 20 to 7. Right, we we'll can get out of here. But real quick, real quick. Dwayne Wade, We can really get out of here. Now, yeah, yeah. Like, he, he, he's been brought under fire yeah. because, of course, you know, he has a, a, a son that believes that he rather he identifies as a as a female. And 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 and, and Dwayne and his wife supports him in that. And they're exploring options, you know, and alternatives to his God-given uh, birth sex. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yes, yes, please. Can I speak? But but I'm saying, but this is this is this is something that is throughout society, mm-hmm. whether it's the public use of bath uh, restrooms, whether it's uh, how we identify domestic abuse if someone identifies as a woman but they were born as a man and they hit another woman is that domestic like what like how are we how are we dealing with it we can't just have an androgynous society yeah i i go back to i still think that there some things are black some things are white some mm. things go up some things go down mm. everything is not this big blending melting pot and everybody just gets to Switch and move and do. Right. As it relates to parents and children, I think children have lots of thoughts and ideas mm-hmm. about who they are, who they not. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they might want to kill cats. They might want to, like, it's all kind of stuff that kids go through. I think that those decisions should be made at a later, made time. At a later yeah. time. I think it's our job if as parents. If you can't decide whether or not to get a tattoo until you're 18, why should you be able to decide whether or not to change your gender? Yeah, That's what I agree. That's a much more permanent decision yeah. than deciding to get a tattoo. And mind you, yeah. mind you, yeah. in Dwayne Wade's defense, yeah. I am not here to critique or 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 question how any man chooses Correct. to run their household. Absolutely, I agree. That's his decision. As his child, they have to deal with mm-hmm. it. Yeah, I can say, okay, well, if that were me, how would I think? Right. Well, and I... that's all. You know, I don't in any way want to seem like I'm being critical of Dwayne Wade because it's not my decision. But here's my thing, and I kind of came under. Everybody was like shocked when I said this. I was on a national TV show, and they were talking about dating and how soon should you have sex and how should, soon should you not and Whoa, what should you ask. And, there's a real and I said, barometer for that. Yeah, like how quickly. And I said, well, I think you should at least know their gender at birth. Uh-huh. It, everybody was like, <gasps> and I'm like, they didn't air that's it. That's a new one. Let me just say that. They I didn't was like, it. why is that a problem? Like, that's a new one. That's yeah. not. I'm not saying that. That the decision, I'm just, you You should know. I should know. Everybody should know everything about everybody. Yeah. Like, at least, if you like date before somebody, you, you should you know, know the gender before at birth. You I think it's okay it, you know. to say that. But what has happened, our society, I remember, let me say this. I Go remember say, being in the Mac store sister. one day. And there was a transgender, he was, he was uh, operating as a woman, but I could tell he was a man. And I was so pleased with the way he serviced me I said do you have a card and when he gave me his card the card looked like a man but he looked like a woman and he kind of held his head head down I said lift your head up and be proud Mm. don't hold your head down for anybody now independent of my spiritual beliefs independent of all of that stuff that is a human being that's right and he felt ashamed and I wanted him Did to have an out? experience because he, he, you know, he was obviously, a, he was ashamed because he used to be a man, but now he's a woman. But he made the card, which, He like, made it, right. It's, maybe he didn't he have ma- any he, he made He made the card, which kind of alluded to the fact that. Exactly. He was okay. But he was still ashamed. Well, I, I, I also it. think it was probably because you're a black woman. Ah. Correct. Ah, another question. Yes. Now. So, I, you you're absolutely right. I think it's, and he didn't know how I was going to, cause I was so like, he was a good 
person who provided me with good service. That's all I saw. Right. That's right. Now, right. before he gave me the car, I already knew because, you know, sometimes you can tell. Mm -hmm. But it's okay. Mm -hmm. My point was that's a human being who breathes, who hurt, has a heart, mm -hmm. who hurts, or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and who I, can kill. Oh. Yes. Okay. So that I think that, as you deal with people, <laughs> no, no, I deal with people. Listen, yeah. as you deal with people, you you could nurture this person. You could, you know, put pour the right amount of energy into their existence that will cause them to go on to help other people. Or you could pour enough negativity in their cup that'll cause them to go kill people or hurt other people. Yes. Like, mm. Okay, now I get So, and my we, point is, right. we have become so accustomed to judging and beating people down that if somebody like me then has a, that's an okay thing to say. Mm -hmm. You should know the gender of the person you're going to sleep with. You should know the original gender, but that's okay. Right. You should that shouldn't be taboo to say. Now you know what? There's a no. It shouldn't be. There's actually a TED talk that I saw mm. of a of a man who is now a woman mm -hmm. who's also a scientist ah. who broke down that there are at two different times where the sex of a baby and the brain of a baby are developed mm -hmm. and the if the chromosome chain the dna gets mm -hmm. twisted somehow mm. you will have an uh, extraordinary situation happen mm. exceptions are made for exceptional circumstances nonetheless but it shouldn't be the systematic standard Agree. You see what I'm saying? If you have an exceptional child, just like if you if you have an autistic child, mm -hmm. right? You treat him different once you recognize that they're autistic. However, you do not just treat every child as though they have autism. There you go. Like just, but I, 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 off I, the bat, because yeah. there needs to be doesn't... time to develop. You know, when when I think about when people put themselves in these boxes with these names and these labels mm. at 13, 14, 15, you don't even, you don't know, even know who you how are. How can you, like, yeah. like, like, okay, so we were speaking about this earlier. I didn't get a chance to make my full point. So they, they were saying that, you know, I was wrong for questioning or, or uh, asking about the tact of my daughter's hymen. Um, that is, that is what I was pointed out to be wrong for so I how I saw that was you're telling me my daughter has to check in with her mom to change her hair color to cut her hair to get a weave to get a certain kind of nail mm -hmm. to you know get, get tattoos mm -hmm. okay so those decisions she cannot make for herself. That's right. But whether or not to give her body to a man who could be completely undeserved. Who could be a fool. <laughs> and probably is a fool. But that's what I'm trying to say. So, Baby, so you telling me I'm supposed to let her make that decision yeah, on her no. own. Mm -mm. But she's supposed to come and ask for permission to make these other decisions. Yeah. That to me seems the only thing that's different is because historically the young the daughter would go to the black mother for those kinds of uh uh authorizations mm -hmm. and whereas as a black father i just don't think that society has deemed our positions valuable enough to have these kinds of discussions no matter how much input effort energy mm -hmm. time attention we put into being a father they just feel like, man, nah, you you a nigga, and you had a baby, you ain't mm -mm. you ain't I, fit to lead. A black I think man that you, I is think... a protector and a provider, and whether he's working or not, mm -hmm. he's a protector. He's a provider, mm -hmm. and uh, I have to get out of here. That's I, what think, I think I think so, you, you know, made your a uh, good and, point and, and women at are too. the red We're, table talk. We like to the me, lioness. You, Smashed it. Well, I mean, you know, in, in terms of just the club, the, just the, the information the that you... goes out and kill everybody, right? You dig what I'm saying? <laughs> Don't kill some. <laughs> Why are we talking about killing? Don't kill I'm, so so we go, we I'm go. hungry. The this has been great. Goes out. 
Yeah. This has been uh, absolutely thank awesome. Thank you guys yeah. so much. Hey, listen, we how about this, back. right? Yes. Uh, your Hip Hop Sisters Foundation mm-hmm. website info. Please tell everybody how they can get in touch with you. Absolutely. HipHopSisters.org. Or EducateOurMen.org. The dot org let you know that shit is official yeah, as a real. referee it's with a whistle. Real. You know this what I'm saying? Show. Hey. Referee with a whistle. Now, yeah. like, do you yes. still do music? You know what? I have a whole album that I did with Warren Campbell. Dope. I got some songs with Kane, with, Ra- with Raheem Devine, but Ooh. I don't know when we're putting it out. I'm just moving how I feel. You know what? That's how I do my music. Yeah. That's how I do my music. Yeah. Uh, we got 400 songs just sitting yeah. up. Yeah. Um, we got an MC Light app. I we mean, put it on there for the fans. You know what I'm saying? The, for the I got some fans. dope shit, too. That mm-hmm. I, I enjoy right. when people, when I play it for people, mm-hmm. and they listen to it and say, hey, where can I get it? You can't. You can't. And I see people <laughs> trying to Shazam it at parties. <laughs> They they trying to just it. it ain't on there, bro. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. I enjoy that. It's mm-hmm. exclusivity, scarcity. Mm. Scarcity. Mm-hmm. Um, we need a few of them 400 songs, though. Man, I'm going to give them to you. <laughs> she could put them out tomorrow if she wanted to. If she wanted to put them out, she could put them out tomorrow. Okay. Uh, any female rappers that you like right now? Oh, man. Tierra Wack. She dope. Yeah. She dope as hell. She's dope. She dope as hell. I love running hell. into her on Instagram and she just wilding out. I like Lady London. Mmm, don't know her. I'm, I, I'm, it's, it's Google. You know, I come it's from the, right, absolutely. You know? I come from the school where if you can, if you got flow right. and you saying something, right. it's just like, yeah. What about but, Rhapsody? Yeah. I love, love Rhapsody. Yeah, I love Rhapsody. Yeah. That's North yeah. Carolina coming through. It's a lot of them out there. May Day out of Detroit. Okay. You know, I like to Cash Doll. I like Cash Doll dope. Yeah, I like and Tokyo going, Jets too. I have Tokyo Jets. Yeah, yeah that's your people. Yeah, so that's yeah. Right. Tokyo Jets. She, um, she, she's, she's she she's reminds with me of you. Uh, yeah, the flow, you know? It's man. like you talking that smack at the same time, but you got that flow. <laughs> and that accent. Like y'all make words sound way cooler than they are. Uh, right? well, Tokyo Hair is from Duval. She's from Jacksonville. You ain't got okay. That accent no more. Nah, I had to. I had to straighten you myself really. up. What? I, to, I know how to talk. I know how to get like that if I need to. No. All right. That's wait, cool. wait. Just you wait think later that... on. I'm gonna show you it to you. I'm gonna no? show it to you. I'm gonna show it to he you. He said he gonna show it to <laughs> you. If you go back to his first album, no, nah, like you she... know, versus the album, last album, and yeah. his voice is totally different. Mm. See, what she talking about here, for one, she talking about, you know, one day in L.A., I'm at the mall, and I'm back with well-built bras. And I, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, see, look. see, see? <laughs> She's like, she want that. She want that. <laughs> but see, the thing is, as you learn and you grow and you yeah. evolve, you yeah. understand that this is a, a broken mm-hmm. English that we speak in. Mm-hmm. This is, you know, this yeah. is not the appropriate way to articulate your thoughts into words and speak in correct English where you can right. be, you know, accepted and respected mm-hmm. by people who happen to be the decision makers right. of society. Yeah. Right. So, I, you know what I mean? I, I, I maintain the authority option or ability to do both. Well, and, well, and because you get into a space where you now can be understood, mm. you're able to be accepted by the masses, right on. which gives you more territory. You just expand your territory. And then you can always go underground and do the whoop de woo woo Yeah, you, know? you dig what I'm saying? You underground. Saying, that would be that, uh, underground. UGK they never lose there. They sound the same. Yeah, yeah, but man. a lot of I mean, I mean, we all know UGK. We all had different but they journeys. Ain't hit the we pinnacle. all had different journeys. Yeah. Everybody in life had different journeys, and mm-hmm. UGK they 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 lived throughout their journey, mm-hmm. so that 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 I could you know pick up where they left off mm. and carry mine's even further. Yeah. you know, just you as, could just have whatever you like. Just as MC mm-hmm. like, see, UGK yeah, would have never so made that song. Up. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I had to. Yeah. I liked it, baby. Look at the life I was living then versus the life I was living at the time when you you know with the the dialect that you're speaking of. Mm-hmm. But I'm I just don't want you to get it confused because people <laughs> love people That's love right. the accent that yes. we have. Mm-hmm. So you know, yes. that, I can't hide it. But at the same time, I don't have to, I don't have to, I don't have to pull it on so thick intentionally. And a lot of time, because you know what? When I saw New York motherfuckers was trying to sound like Southern motherfuckers (laughs) in order to get their record on the radio at a certain time. That's when I knew. Uh-oh. You know what? This shit might be a little, you know, dated. No, but it's, it ain't no dated. It's natural. It's good. 
It's, it's natural. It's natural. Look, it's, 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 it's you. I love yeah. and respect my wife, but if I can close out the interview, I have two more questions. The rappers that you like today, mm-hmm. what advice would you give them? Not even just female rappers. Right. The ones that I like. The yeah. multitudes I'm talking mm-hmm. about because, you know what I'm saying, like it's a, mm-hmm. a saturation of the market like no other in this mm-hmm. thing of ours. So how could we advise people I to get say, the fuck out the way? Well, mm-hmm. I, I would just say... You, sorry, you're talking about you're you talking about, no because you know what uh, there's many things that come to mind. First, I'm thinking about you said the rappers that I like. Is there something I would like to share with them? Okay. I would say always to find your multiple streams of income. Mm. That that would be uh, you know just an inkling of what I can leave because I know that we're wrapping up. No, the no, other take thing, your time. no, take your no, time. no. But the other thing, <laughs> the, the other thing you said was just it's oversaturated. Yeah, I would say know your part. Mm-hmm. Like, just because you want to be on the mic doesn't mean that you should be. Mm. And you should really find something that works for you. And stop forcing something into place that really ain't, you know, you're trying to fit a square into a round hole. That's real. So find whatever it is that really works for you and get out of the way and make room for the people that really Mm. really are gifted. (laughs) This, This is not something you get better at. Right. So what do you think about the Cardi B's and the Meg the Stallions? Because I heard you name a lot of rappers that I don't know. Well, the, and the oh, thing is, shit. Right? God the damn. thing is, I can say, I mean, that would be typical for me to say, you know, Nikki, She's talking about the Cardi, people who don't get I'm mentioned I'm saying they don't often. get the shine. I, I enjoy them. I listen to them. I You know, I I think they all got their own this is little what we distinct. Have. We, have, we have a, uh, a surface mm-hmm. versus beneath the surface Mm -hmm. discussion back and forth all the time as it pertains to, you know, art, entertainment, Mm -hmm. movies, television shows, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And and, and she has a a very distinct perspective Mm -hmm. that comes from the culture, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Her favorite TV show is Martin. Mm, Still, right. mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. Martin. Right, God I got damn you. it, mm-hmm. that's her favorite. But I mean, mine. I would probably say, uh, not my, not necessarily Shine my favorite. Oh, uh-huh. Curb Your Enthusiasm. I do like Curb Your Enthusiasm. Would be one. Uh-huh. Curb Your Enthusiasm you. would be one. Uh-huh. I mean, like, look, Friends and Seinfeld, because I know all too much what it's like to grow up like me. Mm-hmm. I already yeah. know what that is. Right. So you want to I, see something else, another yeah. world. Another but I world. do recognize the fact that living single opened the door for friends to even be mm-hmm. what it was. So mm-hmm. I, I also recognize that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Did I answer that question? No, because I want to be clear. You very that I have respect for multiple all streams of female incomes. MCs. No, I'm talking about in terms of the, the ones cards to Meg Stallion. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I like all. all of them, but they always get the shine. So I'm trying uh, to just give some notoriety to the ones. But it's still good, good to why hear do you it from. Think that they get the shine. Yeah, and Moo Moo Fresh. What it's still mean? good to hear it from. Why do you think they get the shine versus the ones? That oh, because they got paying. record labels paying yeah, money for them to travel them. around the globe. But they're but before, still valued the in deals, MC though. Life How they got to the record deals? That's I love Cardi saying. B. Yes. Every, every still case value, is different. There's still value. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I'm, I'm in 100% agreement. There's mm-hmm. still value in MC Light saying, yeah, I, I love Cardi B and, mm-hmm. and Remy. And mm-hmm. like to say that. Yeah, like, Remy. You yeah. are a legend. So mm-hmm. to, you know, when you hear things like, Somebody like a Quincy Jones who'll yeah. say something to a younger artist mm-hmm. that is out there. That's a reinforcement. And I think it's Absolutely. important to remember that. I think, that. you know, what I think of is when I'm asked that question, I, I'm, I'm going to say five, right? Like, mm. I'm going to say five names. Who Top am five. I gonna, Top five. Who yeah. am I going to use that space for? Mm-hmm. There are, I love them, no doubt. They know it. I, you know, it's... It, I've always shown support mm-hmm. for all of you them. And you're not on trial here. You no. can't make people feel I, like that. We you just want to hear like that, No, that wasn't, wasn't even y'all. Here. That wasn't even y'all. That was her. Oh, yeah. Because she me. was but, making but it. But my thing is, you you know it, they know it, but the public doesn't know it. So this is going to go out. So the all world like has MC been respectful like to MCs everybody all the time. I gave a little shine. To the he, and, and Nikki and she sings drip like drip all, all the time. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> yes, I you know I have respect for them all because I'm gonna tell you it's still very much a man's world, mm. and for any 
female, any woman to step up and say that they want to attack this mic, they got to be on top of their game in one way or the other. You understand? Yes. Dr. Lynn, if you had a theme song, what would it be? Hard work. Hard work. Hard work. That's all. That's actually a good one. That's 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 a good one. I said in my company, everybody got to learn the words. Hard work. Those are the only two words. That's the only two words. Only two words you need to sing that song. I like it. That's it. Hard work. Two rules to live by. Be a person of your word, and have the freedom to say no. Mm. It's called fuck you money, everybody. It's called fuck you no. money. <laughs> oh, okay. <no. laughs> My wife, she went and got herself some fuck you money. I've been hearing the two words together almost, uh, I'm just saying, effortlessly ever since. And I appreciate her because when she <laughs> says fuck you to me, it lets me know she has more money and I can rest <laughs> in the comfort of her luxury. Uh-huh. Um, okay. Well, hey, equality. Yeah. Okay. Um, last, last question to both of you. What would you say is the loudest voice in your ear and why? I would say right now, the, the most significant voice Mm -hmm. is that of God's. The loudest voice is. Is hers. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> because Lynn is someone that's going to challenge me to be better. Right. And as you know, in the positions that we're in, it's not too many people that will even tell you when you could have done something better, when you could have perhaps made a better decision on that, or <laughs> um, the council. Right. It, either they don't trust themselves enough to say anything. Or they just don't because they don't recognize it themselves. But I would say that Lynn recognizes almost every moment because she's a strategy person. Mm. So she's able to see things, see everything, whereas I'm looking here. So that it's, there are things that are missing. Oh, my God. Things that I don't see. It's missiles know? coming, and she's just going <laughs> to let them hit them. Hey, hey, easy. <laughs> so... Yeah, so I would say resting in a voice that I trust is extremely important. What would you say your Um, loudest voice? I would say, I think I would say the same thing. The most significant voice is God's, but the loudest voice is my worst self. Mm. Mm. Wow. It's my worst self. It's that part of you that doesn't want to do the right thing, got a bad attitude, blah, 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 blah. So I'm always shutting that voice down and attempting to learn from my mistakes and do the right thing. All right. Well, that's good that you can recognize it. Oh, I recognize yeah. it. It's like, who are you? Right. Like, literally. I wonder, is can... that the voice that I'm hearing? No. no. <laughs> the voice that you're hearing is the one, child, you're going to fall off the cliff if you don't get off the yeah. side. <laughs> But we're done with you because you know yeah. Yeah. Listen, twice. I will say this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will say this. Yes. I appreciate these strong black women sitting at this table with me, being patient enough with me, and also understanding enough to offer me insight, perspective, uh, uh, and progressive thoughts to move me ahead into the future. And that is the way a society works, people. Yeah. people. You know what I mean? The, those of us who are stronger in certain areas help those of us who are weaker in other areas. Mm-hmm. And you guys have helped me today to understand that I don't understand a goddamn thing. Okay. So, <laughs> with that being said... Expeditious. <laughs> uh, I, I, I would like to thank you all again. Thank you, Tamika, you know, for thank continuing... You, to be the grounding force in my life and remind me that I ain't shit. (laughs) (laughs) You dig what I'm saying? Make sure, because if you don't realize that you ain't shit, you can't be shit. (laughs) So, thank you for... Being the submissive wife that you love. Cap. Cap. That's a lie. I am very submissive. And Lies. I want, you, I want you to. Only in one way. Keep that Ooh. in your. What? Be, so as we it's progress Dr. on. Go. Thank you guys, Dr. Lynn. <laughs> oh, MC Light. You know. If there's any anything besides. No, we just love you. And thank you yeah. so much for this invitation. And thank you. This was Keep awesome. And this has been. Oh, one more time. The word of the week was. 
Empirical. Empirical. Mm. Empirical. Okay. That's now, good. having gone through it. Now, the last thing you got to do is use it in a sentence. Um, the the knowledge and uh, education that you have acquired has been empirical. You see what I'm saying? Now you can go use it at your at your at your school or your or your workplace. Yeah. Yeah. Stand around a water cooler. You can pretend like you've known it all your life. Give right. an MC mm-hmm. Light or me no credit or Dr. Lynn. And and, and 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 that's what we do here at Expeditiously. That's what we do. Thank, Thank you, you. Toyon. Thank, Thank you all. Thank this you, has been Toyon. Expeditiously. Watch your favorite episodes of Expeditiously right now on the Expeditiously YouTube page.